Good morning, I'm John Cole Morgan and welcome to Sewing Street. It's going to be a phenomenal couple of hours ahead. We've got Wendy in with our fabulous sweet shop and pet shop and their little kitty cats climbing up. Sorry, I've got to stop. I have to do my job. These are just adorable. So we've got that at eight o'clock. Um, so if you haven't shopped with us before, let me tell you how best to do that. It's the easiest way is the website, www.sewingstreet.com. Um, and that will have, uh, as you go on, it'll have a little YouTube page and you can watch us live on there. Hello. And then beneath that, you've got all the amazing products from today's show and previous shows. And we've got about six trillion picture, um, items on there. It feels like that when you go through them and you can go through and see all the amazing products we've got. If you'd like to get in touch with us, we really love hearing from you. Best way of doing that is studio at sewingstreet.com. That's our email address. Uh, failing which, you can get us on our Facebook um, page, which is Sewing Street TV. Um, and then on the Sewing Street TV page, you will then be able to click the little message button and you'll be able to drop us a line and we can then answer any questions you have or just say hello back to you today. So we'd love to hear from you. We've got Wendy in. It's her anniversary today and she's come to spend the day with us today. I'm really pleased about that and I'm so excited for the next couple of hours. But before we get there, let me show you our fantastic early bird. Rotary cutter blades. We never change them enough, but the second you do, don't you just feel so much better when you do them? But we've not only got one pack of three, we've got two packs of three for you today. And these are £13.98 for both of these. So those are six blades. That's, that's just over £2 a blade. Absolutely incredible deal there, and you're saving four pounds on the steel today. Absolutely brilliant, and I love these blades. They're completely universal. They're 45 mil blades, so you can use them in any product, whatever your rotary cutter is, uh, whatever your preference is, these blades will work in absolutely everything. Normally, how much? $8.99 a pack normally. So today, getting the two together in our early bird, you're gonna be saving four pounds. Now, I do think it's really important that we change our rotary cutter blades as often as we can, because when you're cutting through them, I find when you go through with your rotary cutter blades and your blades are a bit dull, you are putting more pressure on it. And you know when you've been cutting a big quilt out or lots of bag products, when you're cutting for a long time and your blades are a bit dull, it'll still work, but you've got to put all that extra effort in. And well, I find I get cramps in my arm doing things like that but the second you change that blade it's like going through butter it's absolutely brilliant now I do think it's sometimes people get a bit struggle with changing the blade on how to do that so we've been very good and been able to create a little video for you to be able to watch on how best to change your blade please be safe when you're using your blades you've got to be very very careful mm. That is right. Yes, I've just been reminded the last time we had this as an early bird, it sold out and it sold out really, really quickly. And the reason is because we all know a good deal when we see them and this is such a great price. So do make sure you check out on your basket. You've got your one day 3.95 p and So if you buy the blades today, you've paid your postage and packaging. Rest of the day, everything you buy is completely free for postage and packaging. You then don't have to pay any more or any less. You can check out as many times as you like. You only pay that what PNP once throughout the day. So now we've got a little video to show you how to do this, but please be very, very safe when you're changing your blades. They are incredibly sharp, and anybody who's hurt themselves a rotary cutter, you only do it the once, but please don't do it the once. Be careful. Take as much care as you can. Enjoy the video. side that's absolutely normal because these blades you can keep them for years and years and years and years and having the oil in them just makes them the, the longevity last that little bit longer but the problem with that is when you do come to use them occasionally you've got a little bit of um, oil that you need to wipe off now these ones are really good because they've got this little paper sleeve in there separating your blades so you can see i've got this little sleeve there and that then separates your blades across so oh hang on there we go so i then put that one back so i've now and my i also then do something differently which i'll show you now so when you wanted to change your blade you're going to first of all make sure you're being very careful pay lots of attention no screaming people in the background make sure that everything's off and you're only focusing on this. So you take the 
screw off, you take the nut off, and you take this off. Oh, and there we go. Blade has popped out. Now, can you tell that that's got a ring of dirtiness around there? Little bits of lint, that's quite normal. Don't worry, that's absolutely fine. Now, when you get your rotary cutter like this, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of fabric. I try and get a little thin piece of fabric like this, a bit of old salvage works well. And I just go in there and I try and get rid of all these little bits of um, fluff in here. And I know you just I go through and I give it a nice little blow as it as well, get rid of everything. And you just give it a bit of a clean because these you're using these every day and there are little bits of oil in here that you are going to end up just... You can see just in that, you can see that's got all bits of gunk in it. That is completely normal. There's nothing wrong with your cleaning regime. You do not need to feel bad in any way. That is completely normal. Don't worry. And if it's not, mine is as well. So don't worry. You're in a good company. I also then just take this and fold this a couple of times to go through and just get rid of any little bits that I haven't been able to get. And I just do that just to get rid of bits of fluff and bits that are in there. Right. <clears throat> At this point, I pick up my blade using this lovely little piece of, um, oh, I'm out of screen. So I pick my blade up using this little piece of paper. You can see I've got that piece of paper there. I then put my finger on the middle of this. Now you've just got to make sure you're being safe on this. However you want to do it, just make sure you're being safe. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, hold that that way. I'm just going to pull the paper off. I should have pulled the paper off before I did this. There you go. So you can see you're just getting rid of the paper there. Now, all of us are going to have that happen. You take this to the edge of the table, you hold it and you get it a little bit off the table. And then when you're grabbing it, you're not grabbing it on the blade, the sharp bit of the blade, you're doing that. So then I've just popped that back in there. Now, that is safe for the minute. What I'm going to do now is I know that that bit there goes onto the top here. Now notice that this has got that lovely guard on the edge there. So all I've done is I've just made sure that I put the blade in, I put the, that through, I then take my little nut, and then I take that and I put that on and I tighten that up. Now every rotary cutter is different. You do it how you like. Now I put this to one side. Now watch what I'm doing here. This is important. I'm now taking my empty blade. I've put the little piece of paper on the top of it. Now there are two things you can do with this. If you have a sharp spin, you then take this and put this in your sharp spin and you get rid of it. If like me, you don't have a sharp spin, when you've used these up, what I do with this is, because it's so obvious once you've got a blade that's been used, you can tell it's dirty, I pop that in the in, into the, oh goodness me, sorry, I'm just going to do this and not talk for a second. There we go. So all I'm doing there is I'm putting the dead one on the top and then I get a sharpie or something and I write two on there knowing that I've got two that are new and one that isn't because there are always going to be three in them. And then once you emptied one, that's your dead bin and you just write dead on it. And then those are your dead blades. The reason that's important is because if you don't have a sharps bin, um, don't put this in your rubbish bin, wrap it up in paper, but even wrapping it up in paper, it can be quite dangerous. So please, these are really, really sharp, especially if you've got kids, make sure you're looking after yourselves that way. These are one of those little forgotten things that people just put them in the rubbish bin and then don't realize why there's a massive hole in their, their bin. So that's a great way of doing that. And then once you've done this, the next thing I would say is for the first few cuts that you do, goodness me, look at that. So all I'm doing now is, and you literally just take a dead bit of salvage and you just keep doing this. And I always do this. I get a dead piece of fabric that I'm not going to use. And I cut a lot up in one go. It's very good as well. If you've had a really bad day, you just cut little things up and do that. The reason being is that any oil that's now on the outside of your blade is going to come off on this fabric rather than when you cut your Liberty up and we don't want you damaging your good fabric. So that's a really, really, that's my top tip on changing your blades. 
so much easier than you think. And you see it's really easy to change them nice and safely. And look how much better it was once you've changed them. Really, really pleased they brought these back as an early bird today. You've got the six rotary cutter blades, two packs of three, saving four pounds in our deal today for 13 pounds 98. Such a great deal. I'm hearing lots of you have already checked out on them and you're getting your the congratulations on getting that bargain. Hopefully you will get have enough stock to keep you all going through the day. Um, so make sure you check out your baskets as you're going along. Just a little bit of a reminder on how to shop with us today if you want to. It's www.sewingstreet.com. If any which you can call our um, call centre on 0800 001 4433. They'll be able to answer any of your questions, any of your queries. And um, yeah, easy way of doing it as well. Now, coming on next, we have got the most fabulous little doorstops. We've got new today, the sweet shop and the pet shop. And these are a bundle together. I just love them. I keep turning them around, seeing which one's more cute. Absolutely adorable. And each time I look at them, you get different detailing on it. I want an ice cream now. But look at these. You've got the little parrot there. So these are coming to you together today with uh, the panels, the bonder web, the um, instructions, as well as your stuffing to do these. So you're getting one bag of um, the stuffing, one, one bag of the craft wadding if you want to do something with that. So you've got the two bags of those in your bundle. You can see how much you're getting then. So you're getting both sets of instructions. <coughs> this is, f they're the same instructions there. So you're getting the instructions there with it. And then you're getting your your panels, now these panels are just adorable. This is the sweet shop. Oh, never stays. This is the sweet shop panel. And you've got everything you need on there, absolutely adorable. The detailing on these is incredible. I'm doing really well putting things on the set today. Apologies about this. Please stay, please stay. There we go. And you're getting the, the panel there for the sweet shop. And then you're also getting the panel here for the pet shop. So adorable. Look at the little puppy and the kitty cats and everything. Really, really gorgeous here. Yeah. And you've got a little letterbox. Oh, I love these. We'll look at the details a bit more closely later on. And we've got a little bag of Bond Web for you as well. So all of that is included today um, for £29.99. So every month we're planning on bringing out a couple of these each month. So maybe you're collecting them or you just love them. They are so adorable. Because these could be really good at just decorations or as the official doorstops. I have to say, I am looking at these and thinking on my little sewing desk in the studio. It'd be quite nice to have these in there. I think they're really, really adorable. I'm loving these. So the detailing on them is so adorable. Look at the windows, the little bird box there. And you can see all the kitty cats playing on their little toy over here. Oh, wrong finger. <laughs> the little kitty cats playing on the toy over here. They're just so cute. And you've got a little puppy there. And you've got the bunting going all the way around, which I've just realized, I've seen it there. Oh, it's so cute. And you've got the little bird there with its bird bath. It's very cleverly thought out that. That's the pet shop. And then things I'm much more associated with at the sweet shop. Look at all the little jars of sweeties and goodies there. Going all the way around. Oh, what an ice cream. Mm. I still think they should make coffee ice cream for breakfast. I'm not sure that'll ever take off, but there we go. But how adorable are these? Absolutely gorgeous. Love these. Hmm? Oh. So now we also do the pet shop on its own. Loving that. So this is just going to be your one panel. So that will be your pet shop panel and your instructions. So you're getting your pet shop panel, your instructions, and the details. And you're also getting your wadding and your stuffing for this and your bonder web. Gosh, that's a huge deal. 
So you're getting the body wadding, the stuffing, you're getting the panel, the instructions, and your bonder web, all in that deal just for the pet shop on its own. You're getting all of that for $19.99. And then equally, we're doing exactly the same thing for the sweet shop. So you get the sweet shop panel this time, the bonder web, the instructions, the wadding, and the stuffing, all available there as one single item for $19.99. So if you didn't want to buy them both together for the $29.99, you can get them individually, and that's then got exactly the same things in it. You'll be getting your wadding, you're getting your toy stuffing, the bonder web, and the instructions. All that'll change on the $19.99 deals is the, uh, the panel. But now we've also got the uh, haberdashery and the florist. Now these are coming together as a bundle today as well. So again, on exactly this one again, you're gonna be getting the, the wadding and the stuffing as you do with it, as I showed you on the previous one, you're getting your bonder web and the instructions. And then you're getting the two panels on this as well, one for the florist and one for the haberdashery. This one's the florist. And you can see it's got absolutely everything on it. Look at the little window there with the kitty cat sitting in the window. The level of detail that's gone into making these is so clever. Even the clocks are so good. I absolutely, I think they're really, really cleverly thought out. And the detailing on the brick, it's really, really clever. Even to the point of putting the inside of the roof is a different color. Really, really clever on that. So that one's the florist. And then we've got the haberdashery. I know which one I'd be wanting. Because the haberdashery, it's obviously the best thing in the universe. So you've got the haberdashery there as well. Again, the detailing on it is so clever. The little boxes in the window, and you can see the little sewing machine there, and ball of wool in the basket there. Very, very cleverly thought out. Even when you look through the door, can you see the pictures hanging behind? You've got the little um, needle, uh, the needles and the, the knitting needles and the ball of, th ball of thread. Really, really beautiful. So those are coming together today, uh, both the haberdashery and the florist for $29.99. So we're just going to show you now how it is that you can best buy with us now while we get the lovely Wendy on the set. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. And I'm so excited. We've got Wendy Orlando. It's so lovely to have you. It's Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. 31 years, One years did you 31 say? 31 years. 31 today. years married. Yes. Slash 31 years hard labour. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can say nothing <laughs> on that. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> it's safe. Well, congratulations. Thank it's you. lovely to have you here. Aren't these incredible? They are gorgeous. Which one's your favourite? Um, do you have a favourite? No, I love them all. I do I do like the pet shop. Right. And that was such fun. They're all fun to They're make. They're really good. But it's the detail I'm loving. Yeah. Because if you look in the little windows, you've got little, oh, you can put dog treats. Oh, my gosh, all the cans of food say woof on them. They're so clever. When you look at the panel, it, it doesn't look as, as good as it does when you actually make them up. It's very true. So tell me a little bit about you. Some um, people may not have met you before. No, um, I'm a craft blogger, 
Mm -hmm. So I've got um, a blog that has got lots of tutorials on there, and I'm aiming myself at the at the the crafters that have never done it before and are just learning. So everything is really easy and step by step oh, for them. Yes. Yeah, so um, that's the Crafty Co. So you can find me over there. Wonderful. Um, and I do all kinds of crafts. Every everything you could imagine. Do you have a favourite? It's it's a toss up between crochet and sewing. Okay, so oh, that's I a nice good combo. It, it's brilliant. I won't deny it's my favourite too. <laughs> You're just learning though, aren't you? I love crochet. Yeah. Love it. No, it's brilliant, and I, I obviously sewing is is my passion, but it's not very transportable. I can't sit no. and do it in the car or on picnics and things. Whereas crochet, crochet, I can just put it in a bag and take it with me. It's very true. And you can take it on aeroplanes as well when we can go you back can. on aeroplanes. They can. You Brilliant. certainly can, yes. So what are you going to show us today? Well, I'm actually going to show you today, um, I'm going to make the, the sweet shop today. Perfect. So would you like me to start? Of course, please go on in. So I'm going to show you a bit of everything mm -hmm. so that people know how to make the whole of the stock because sometimes you can read the instructions it's not always as clear as you think it is but when you actually see someone doing it makes a lot more sense I'm a visual learner myself I a lot of people watching are people seeing how they do it um, I think I am as well yeah I like watching YouTube videos and yeah. things like that so this will be up on YouTube later if anyone's forgotten how to do it I do think um, that's one of the best things we've got is that YouTube page where everything just goes back up on there it's brilliant it is um, and, and when you are watching sometimes you get so caught in the moment you do forget what they're doing so to look back on that is brilliant very much so. this one is actually the pet shop uh, I'm, I will be making this one mm -hmm. but this is just to show you and the first thing that you want to do is you want to cut out all the pieces. Mm -hmm. I would, if, if it was me, I would cut this section, sorry, this section out first. Right. The whole of it and... As one piece. As one piece. Right. Because we're going to be cutting these pieces out individually. individually. Okay. And to put it onto the bonder web, if you cut them out, then put it onto the bonder web, that's much harder. Of course. So if you put it all as one piece and then you can cut, because there are a couple of ways that you do cut it. Um, and I will explain that later. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do first. And if you are in a hurry, that's definitely the way to do it because to, to peel the bond web off, it needs to be cold because obviously you're heating it to, to stick the glue. Of so you want it to be cold. So I would do that first, but cut around all these pieces. Uh, don't cut the, just cut the bunting in, in one. Don't cut them out individually because okay. you, will, you will struggle putting them on the bond web. <laughs> Can I ask you how you know that? <laughs> Sorry, no. I, I had to, I had to. You know exactly what I've done, don't you? But That's what I love doing is because you impart your tips because of the mistakes you've made along the way and all made it harder That's the good yourself. thing about it is exactly. that we make all those mistakes so that other people don't have to. Exactly. That's the first thing that I would do. I would cut the, the applique pieces out and put them on the bonder web and then I would cut the, the rest of the shapes out. You do need to be quite accurate okay. because uh, if you want it to be as good as you can, and I think I've spoken before about your pop sack, which is your preparation of your project and your seam allowance consistency. And if you do both of those, you're going to have an amazing project at the end of it. So cut all the pieces out. You don't have to label them. They are very obvious. If you do want to label them, that's fine. But that's obvious that that's yes. the top of the front and these don't matter if they go no. which way because they're bricks it doesn't matter if you have them upside down the only thing that you do need to be careful with is the roof but again right, if of you course, want because you don't want your shingles going the wrong way exactly around. but it doesn't matter if you if they're up the wrong way who, who cares no one's really going to notice but yeah that's the only thing that you do need to take a little bit of care over so that's the first thing that you do is cut all those out perfect so because obviously we're very short on time, I've done <laughs> quite a lot of the preparation, but as I say, Thank I you. did want to show you how to do a little bit of everything. Of course. So. I think your iron is on. My iron's on, yes. <laughs> um, and I do apologise, I'm not shaking because I'm nervous. I know, I I'm made, so, we, we had to have the aircon on. <laughs> I am, <laughs> windy, so, I am like so this. cold, I'm my, so my hands are frozen, but that's okay. Sorry about that. Uh, because, um, no, that's fine. So I've got my iron. So I have prepared, sorry, I have prepared three of the panels already, 
but we're just going to do this one because I wanted to show you how to do the bonder web. Oh, now, brilliant. Yeah, this, this is brilliant, this bonder web. I've used loads in the past, and this one you can peel off really easy. Mm. Some of them you really it's a bit struggle. Harder, yeah. It is, but if you do find it's not coming off, just get turn it over and just get a pin and score. Yeah. And then you can just break that paper and then peel it back. So you literally that's the way just to do need it. one tiny little molecule <laughs> to give and the whole thing will come off. Definitely. On. But this is brilliant for that. But leave it to cool because it will be much easier because you can just kind of scrunch it, it and it pops off. So I've I've done these ones already and I'm just going to put these on. With with this, there's two sides to it. One looks like grief proof grief. Grease-proof Grease paper. Proof paper, and the other side is a little bit shiny, and you can see, I don't think the camera can pick it up, but you can see, if you look closely, it looks like you can see the glue on yes, there. Yes, yeah, but you can feel it as well. You can, it's got a sort yes. Of this side's so. really soft, yes. and this side has got a little bit of resistance to it. So we just place the applique, and I would have cut them out in the bigger panels and laid them on, mm -hmm. but just place them, I'm going to put them on here, actually, because I don't want to burn your... Oh, very kind. Thank yes, you. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Again, experience. <laughs> We've all done it in a rush. We've done things and then realised we shouldn't. I do blame you for my hands, John, because they are this is so cold. It's completely my fault. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> and what I would do here is I would just put the iron on it just to start it sticking. Yeah, you're almost tacking it down, I suppose. It, definitely. And mm. then I would cut around oh, it. Oh, that's clever. Because otherwise, if you touch the, the sticky part of the paper with your iron, it's going to get the residue on the bottom. Very true. So this way I can now put it on, I can iron it and know that it's going to stick without ruining my iron. Getting a little bit of heat from the iron, John, so we should be okay with the hands in a moment. <laughs> well, I find if I leave it under where you've got it, if you put your hands on the surface in about oh, a minute or two, it heats up quite nicely. That's a good nicely. idea. I will be doing that. So that's, I'm just, yeah, we'll do that one. I won't do the window because I did have a window on the front of this one, but I'll just do these three pieces. And the good thing about this is it's entirely up to you. You don't have to have it how no. I've got it. You can have it however you like, any way you like. And this is one of my favourite bits because because of my age, I do remember them having the signs that have got the, the big ice cream. I do remember that. <laughs> well, you're not that old. Um, and um, I, <laughs> I remember those, and I only came to this country in 2001. So I, 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 I would imagine those. I am um, quite a bit older than you. Oh, I don't. <laughs> so again, and this this is good to show this because this is a small piece. So all I'm literally going to do is put the iron on it a little bit, without touching any of this round here, just to get that initial stick, and then I just cut. Now, I have a separate pair of scissors for my So do I, and do I you? have forgotten so I, them. I'm so pleased somebody <laughs> else does, because everybody yes. just says it's excessive. No, I've but forgotten them. But I think it's them. really important that you've got different scissors for different things. Uh, you, and you must always have the one pair that just yes, cuts material. exactly. And I've got a few of these at home, and they all look the same, and I'm forever shouting at people at home because they're using them for things they shouldn't do. I'm very lucky because I've only got one person in my studio and that's Sylvia and she knows better. Um, yeah. Well, actually, they she's the one who'd scream at me if I did it the wrong way around. No, they haven't learnt. So what we're going to do now is cut these out. And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can either go really close mm -hmm. or the brilliant thing is the way they've been designed is that the backing is the same very tone clever. as the bricks. So even if you have got a surround, it looks like one of those sills around your windows that you would have in a normal building. And it hides building. the stitches. And again, that's Clever. entirely up to you. You can either do a contrast cotton to make them really stand out. I haven't. Because I think on, I've the, used on, a the, um, on the pet shop, you can see we've used a contrasting... Wrong way around. Um, we've, you can see we've used a contrasting thread on the pet shop. But on the sweet shop, you can see that they've used the same colour. So that's the same. Yes, yeah, I, nice I, I didn't mean to do that, but the top of the pet yes, shop... You did. I didn't, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> I, I did, yes. It was one of those happy accidents. <laughs> they um, really Yeah, adorable. the top of that window is grey. But that's actually true, because you've, yes. you've done these in the same colour, and then that with the contrasting, and both look really, really effective. But aren't these windows just incredible? They have so much detailing They're them. They're really, really good. All of them. All of, they all have fantastic detailing. Right, so you have two, two ways, and the one that I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave a tiny amount around the, the outside around. because I want to do a matching cotton. Because I think from a distance, 
they don't look as though they've been stitched these no they don't and i've just looked at what color thread i think you've got white thread so it may show it's slightly it is close enough so cut round and i'm just if you want to you can cut them square to make it right. easier so oh, i'm just okay. going to do that to show because these will be brilliant for beginners that method oh, if you want brilliant. to be a little bit more intricate and on especially on this one you've got the top of the window Yes. Yeah. You could go round in a semicircle oh, or you wow. could just cut That's straight brilliant. across. So they've left enough room for you to be you able to, to do, do that. But I'm going to just cut square. Well, while you're doing that, I'm just going to remind people that we are actually all looking for new ideas and what you think should be on our little sewing street. So if you've got any ideas or suggestions of what you think we should be able to do as our next few, please make sure you drop them down to us on our email address, studio at sewingstreet.com, failing which onto our Sewing Street TV fans, uh, Sewing Street TV uh, channel page, um, and drop us a message on there. We'd love to hear from you. And we've got all the different ideas coming through are really good. So please keep those coming. We'd love to hear from you. What would your favorite one be, John? I want a gin bar. <laughs> But that's oh, just <laughs> I, I tell you what, hubby would be sat right on the stall next to you if you really did a gin I think it's a really good idea, or a pub, or something like that. I think it'd be quite good. But I think for me, I prefer gin, so I'm. A, He's got every gin, gin you could fan. imagine. We've even got a nice Brighton gin local to us. So. Very good. I'm, I'm legally not allowed to say how many bottles of gin I have. No, well, I think he'd probably give you a run for your money, hmm? hubby. Definitely. So what we've got so far, we have done the wonderful window. So that is. It's the front, isn't it? That's the oh, front. It's the front. Oh, that is so cute. Yeah, that's the front. So we've just done the front panel. That's brilliant. I haven't done the window. I've left the window. It's oh, well, you it's don't there. have to. You no, can I do them can. how you like. <laughs> yeah, everyone is different. Exactly. Um, and and also where you place your bunting, you can have it. I've done that one quite high. That one's a bit lower. It's Ooh. entirely up to you. And no two are going to look the same because. No one is going to use the same stitch as you. No. Even if they've got it set the same, then it's it's never going to be the no, same. No, the way you so, sew is different as well. Definitely. So I've done the first, uh, I've done the um, cutting out, and now it's time, I'm just trying to think. Towards you. Towards yep. me, yeah. <laughs> to position them. And these are... So you've still got the papers on the I bond have, web there. and okay. they, they're cold now. Yes. So I'll just give it a little bit of a, just put my glasses on, and just peel the backing off. It's not going to behave today because I can't... I, Absolutely there are cannot fill. behind you somewhere. <laughs> yes. I think actually Sorry, done. I've done it. I've done, done it. Yeah, oh yes, you can have <laughs> a blade as well. But be very careful with yeah, using yeah, yeah. your scissors. It's sorry, it, it would normally come off it. As I say, it's just that my fingers it's are lie, so It's live, Taylor. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I'll do that just for ease, then I know they're going to come off. So that's all you do if they don't. But um, I'm making it look much harder than it is. They would normally that's not come off. Thing. And it is, you don't have the studio lights and all that when you're working at home. Well, no, you, you don't have someone putting the air conditioning on to make your hands like bricks of ice. <laughs> Am I even <laughs> going to live that down? No. <laughs> no, my, my hands are cold at the best of times, but that, that just tipped them over the edge today. And I'm tidying well, up today. Normally I'm, I'm I just terrified chuck because my husband's listening to this, but I was ironing for a substantial period of time before we went on air. So I was very, very flustered at that point. So I needed to make sure I cooled down. So <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Place them. Now we've taken the back off. Um, so they do feel, I don't know how to explain. They're a little bit tacky, but they're not sticky. We pop them down where you want them. They do have to be mindful that you've got a seam allowance going in here, mm -hmm. a quarter of an inch. So don't put them too close Very to the edge. Point. But also, don't put them too close to the bottom. Sorry, I just chipped my nail. I do apologise. I do. Um, don't put them too close to the bottom because as you, as they fill out, this gets slightly lost oh. because it puffs it out. So by putting, I'm just trying to check. That's it. By putting it like that, you can, sorry, sorry Joe, I'm messing Joe about now with the angles, aren't I? Um, yeah, so as you put it down, you can still see the bottom oh, of right. the door, whereas if you put it right to the bottom, that would get lost. Oh, okay, so I see what you've done here is with this one, you've yeah. put it a little bit lower down, that, that edging there, so when you pop that down there... Yeah, you can see them. You can see them there, that's very clever. So if you do go too low down here, you're going to lose the bottom of your door. You are. Because from a distance, um, you, you don't really notice that you've gone no, a little you bit don't. up. No, you don't. And then just be careful of the side seams as well, so bring them in. Bring them in a little bit. Position them where you want. And if you are doing things that are really close together or overlapping, mm -hmm. do one first, then sew round it, and then do the That's other. That's very clever. 
but most of them, I think it's just the bunting actually that does touch. Uh, I think it might be on one of them, but I think it's on the pet shop. Yes, the bunting does go over the back, the back sign. So put the, the sign on first oh, and then add the bunting on afterwards. That looks really sweet, but I think it looks more authentic being like that as well. That's how it would probably look anyway exactly. on the shop. And then when we to stick them, don't push the iron around, no. just lay it flat yep. and let it do its, its job. So lift it up and press it. And how long it. do you hold it down for? Five, ten seconds? Not long. You can, if you want to, you don't have to sew around them. You could just do this stage and leave them. Mm -hmm. But I think that if they're going to be, and they are going to be picked up, I know they are doorstops, so. but if you've got children around, they're going to pick it up, they're going to touch it, I would always sew around the outside. I would. Because I've had stuff before where I've used the bond away, but I haven't stitched around, and it does start to peel, but you can still repress it, and it can go back on. It's you just the easier doing the, the stitching, I think. Again, it's that preparation. Yeah. If, you've, if you've done it all, um, then it would look much neater, and it's going to last you much, much longer exactly. as well. That's all you need to do. I think a little bit of that isn't stuck, so. but that's okay, because I'm going to be sewing it down. Brilliant. Let's take it over to the machine. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Oh Joe's my goodness! Gonna... I'm hearing half the stock has gone already of these. I am not surprised. I'm not surprised either. They're brilliant. I don't know how they're going to top this. These designers, because I love the first two, but the second two are just amazing, and they, they're they such fun good. to make. They really and they'd are. be brilliant to get the kids involved, not to do the sticking or the sewing, but to get them to do the positioning. Mm. I forgot to actually mention. I got a little bit carried away with the moment. Then, just a top tip is to lay the panels in the order that you are going to have them. Can I get them all in? So, lay them in the order, mm -hmm. because then you'll be able to see oh, what they're going to look like. which way it'll work. That's a good idea. Because in the, in the pet shop, I didn't want the dog at the back of the shop. I wanted him to be sitting around the side to look like the owners just tied him up while they've gone in to get oh. him a bone or something. So it, it, do, it will make a difference how you put them. <clears throat> That's why it's a good idea to lay them out first of all and then you can put them all down. Don't stick them until you're happy. Have a play and then once you're happy, then, then stick, stick them. them all down. Yeah, I've only done these because I say we wouldn't have time because it is quite time consuming to do these, but it's so much fun. But it's fun. so mindful as well. It's a really nice way of being able to spend time doing that. And as you say, great to involve kids with that as well. I didn't time how long it took me, unfortunately, but it's something I think that. That's a good thing. You shouldn't, yeah, some I'm things shouldn't have time limits on them. You should just be but able to But it is something them. that you could maybe cut out one evening. Exactly. And then stick on the next and then sew and then exactly. put it together. So it's something that can be done over two or three evenings. Or you can do it in an... I think you can probably do it in an afternoon. Oh, it it sure. didn't take that long. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew around the outside of the shapes. You can, again, you can free motion these if you want to. Mm -hmm. or That's brave. <laughs> I'm trying to embrace the free motion. I don't like free motion. Well, the, the, the top tip for free motion is you've got to practice for 30 days. You guarantee ah. you're going to do 15 minutes every day or a bobbin, whichever comes first, and you have to do it consistently every That's day That's why I haven't days. quite cracked it yet, because yeah. I haven't done it for Because you cannot have a break. Days. You have to do it for 30 days. Okay, I, I will practice. I do want, because I think it's, it's amazing, because I don't do quilting, <laughs> but because I am a little bit scared of the free motion, but I will embrace that. So you can either do free motion, or you can do a straight stitch around mm -hmm. it, or what I'm going to do is a zigzag stitch. Brilliant. And a lot of people are a little bit scared of zigzag, because some you're looking at the machine to see. I haven't... Just looking to see if you've right, put zigzag yes, stitch Yes, no, on. I, I don't really know this machine, so I'm going there to do go. that. There you go, Yes, yes. This is brilliant, this it's machine. gorgeous I machine, keep telling right. hubby, but... Uh, it hasn't arrived in the post. It's your anniversary. Oh, wow, I should have this. I, I always believe in my marriage, forgiveness is a lot mm. easier than permission. I'm going to have to have a word with them, aren't I? No, no, forgiveness. <laughs> just buy it and then you get it forgiveness afterwards. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, I might. Um, so I would do a stitch length. Again, the one, and, you, and you'll know this, obviously, sewing. The best thing to do is get a swatch. Yes. And then just get your zigzags. Sti uh, stitch on and just do loads of different and then choose the one that you like best because it's quite a small picture I want a small zigzag mm -hmm. um, but that's a the really good idea is if you just have a piece of cotton white cotton and then write next to it exactly what they are then you'll be able to do Th it that's the thing I always forget writing what I've done I say oh I really like that one how and you've did done I do 20 it? stitches ago <laughs> so uh, I know that I want to do a two mm -hmm. by one so I'm going to have a two width yep. by a one length Perfect. So I'm just going to set that. Brilliant. You said you didn't know how to use the machine. You know exactly what you're doing. Have we got the right it's... foot on? Yes. Perfect. Um, 
no, this is this is a brilliant machine. That's most the one. most machines are fine. It's They're just really your fear of them, isn't it? If you just embrace the fear and go with it. So it doesn't matter where you start around the shape. Just pop your needle down, pop your foot down, and then. A lot of people are a bit frightened with zigzags because you get these stray stitches every now and then. And it's all about how, where you leave your needle before you turn corners. It's right if you're going in a straight, because right. you're going successfully. Yes, yes, yes. But as you turn a corner, if your needle's not set in the right position, the stitch sometimes jumps out of place. Oh. And people think it looks a bit messy, but that's Fair really enough. easy. So I'm just going to start down the side and sew to the end. And that's the 680 you're using as well. It is a really beautiful machine. It's brilliant. Um, so you've now left your needle in, in the, the outside right. corner. Yes, in right. the right position. Because as I turn the corner, it's then going to go inside. Into the left. Right. If I'd left it in the left, it would have jumped out to the right. And that's when it starts to look messy. And a lot of people don't like doing zigzag for that reason, because it looks quite messy. So this, this is doing it all for me. This, this, it, so I don't have to do anything but just leave your needle in the down position because then you can lift the foot and this is going nowhere Perfect. now. So I turn it round and I now, I probably could have gone one more actually and I don't know if a lot of people know that if you press your foot just once it just does one stitch. Oh a lot I of people didn't don't, know that. Did you not? I didn't. So I'm, I'm in the left, I need to be in the right so I just press it once and it just does See, it once See I, I rotate my um, dial on the side. Ooh, I know, no, very no, old. Oh, you are. Well, no, not that you're very old. No, no, I know, but that, it just, you know what it is? I didn't know that that happened. I just thought every time, well, I've, I've got my I'm foot gonna to the really floor I'm going to look really silly if it doesn't happen in every machine now. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be pressing it once and it's going to be, but try yours at home I and will. let me know. I will. But yeah, just press it once and then it will do it. So I, I'm now in the right position and I just carry on to the end and leave it in the right. Perfect. I got the 720 for my birthday. Oh. I'm still not unboxed it. I haven't had time yet. That's the trouble. We're just so busy. But it's also I want to make sure I read the manual because I never do that when oh, I buy a machine. Read, read the manual exactly. Then you put you throw it away, and then you have to go online to download the manual when you need to do something. But that's good. I'm I'm very impressed that you've had the you've you've not opened your box yet. I'm really impressed with that. Well, now they're projects on top of it, and I've got to finish those projects before I open the box. Gosh, how many have you got on? Oh, I can't even. Yeah. At least 500, 500. Oh, that's a little bit more than me. There you go. I remember that time. That's brilliant. That is so, so neat. That is really, really neat. And you can see the corners. And I see what you mean about doing the contrasting thread towards the, um, the cream or the white on that. That works really, really well. And if I'd have cut right close to the pink mm. window and used the cream, it would have all shown. So by doing this... But and you see, I think that might have worked quite well mm -hmm. as well because it's, you know, if you look at an old sweet shop, it does have those little markings on the windows and no, things. No, it has to but be. But I think you would have preferred, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, it has to be either you can't see it or, you or it's so obvious. Yeah. Um, but it, it is really easy doing it this way. And that was just a square, but that window's not completely square because it's no, got it's little not. bits jutting around. But for someone that is just starting out, this is absolutely a project a that they would project. be able to do. And that one's square. And this one, if I'd have done it at home, I would have gone around the curve. But if you're new, just do it square. Ooh. And it, you, you, can't, you just can't see. No, you can't. And you see, what I love about this that we've got a bundle is the little puppy that you've got here on the pet shop. You can actually take the little puppy and pop him on there. No, you you see, I wouldn't have mind that because I would be cutting that really quite small, cut right, right close to the little puppy and then put him on with... Uh, see, I don't mind that type of thing. But you're, you're right, if you buy the kit, then yeah. you can just You've do whatever everything. you like. And that's brilliant because then it'll be like nobody else's exactly. at all because no two people are going to use the same pieces. So we've done those. Uh, I won't do the rest of them because I say I don't know how time we are. We've got about 15, 20 minutes. Oh, okay then. Because uh, there are a couple of things that I did want to show because there's, Ooh, there's some tips that make life a lot easier. With the, with the bunting here, uh, you'll see that it, it, it doesn't go right to the end and there is a reason for that because you've got your quarter of an inch seam allowance. Yes. So if you come in um, quarter of an inch and I would just mark the bunting up on, I don't, I didn't put it on the front because I thought the front was quite busy anyway. Yes. But there is enough bunting in there to be able to do that. But I take one of the panels and line it up 
I'm going to put a little bit of bunting at the back. So I just put this up here. So I'm getting the bunting going in roughly the same way. And then I would come in. So the height that you're doing it at, does that matter? No, not at so all. So that's entirely up to you. This, the, the sweet shop that I've done, it's quite high. Mm -hmm. I probably should have gone a little bit lower. But no, it's entirely up to you. You can have See, the See, I love the way you've done it on the pet shop, that it's just at that perfect height over here. I think that's really sweet. That was completely intentional, John. Oh! Was that you? I don't know who that was. I didn't touch anything. Um, we'll just pretend the cushions are still there. <laughs> we'll pretend my bottle of water didn't fall on the floor there. I'm just going to check I put the lid on it. Please forgive me for 30 no, seconds. No, it is. It's oh, okay. It's okay. It's, it's fine. While I'm here. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to these. You're doing these at 11, aren't you? 10. 10. 10. 10. Yes. There we go. Don't breathe anywhere near them. Actually, I think it might have been the bag, but that's fine. So... I've, I've gone in a quarter of an inch uh, from the side. You put me off now, John. Sorry, my problem. Yes, my problem. My now, from the top, you know, it doesn't really matter doesn't from matter. the top at all. I did put, I say this one, it was quite close to the top. Mm -hmm. But uh, that one, it was... I know this one, one I good. love that you've got the bunting in the, in the... It's almost in the eaves. I think that's great. So I've gone a little bit lower with these ones. So if you come in a quarter of an inch and then place your bunting on... So I'm going to draw a line. Now the pen you're using at the moment, is that one of the iron-on ones? This is a, a washable. Washable one, okay. Yeah. I probably would use the air erasable one. Right. Because then you'll come back tomorrow and it'll all be disappeared, whereas this one, but all you need to do, I haven't got rid of this one yet, you just dampen it. You don't need to wet no. it. You just put a little a damp cloth on it and then that will disappear. I've drawn a, an arch and a tip with the bunting is take the backing off the whole strip first. Okay. You're going to ask me how I know that, aren't you? <laughs> I think I figured that one out on my own this time. I cut them all out thinking I was being really clever and then I couldn't get the back off. So just cut them off. Now you've got four different colours, don't you? One, two, three, five. Right. Five. But then some of them are plain, some of them are, are mottled. They're all different. All different. Which one have all you got? Different. You've got the sh I'm going to look. I love this type of detailing though. Oh wow, you've got loads. You've got 11 different buntings and two of them. Oh no, no, hang on. That's I think one. I must have That's lost some on the one. way, John, because I haven't got all That's those. So you've got seven that are the same that you're getting two of, and then you're getting four. Oh, that's confused me now. You're getting three that are the same that you get two of, and you're getting eight that you're getting four of. I'm just going to do four. If you're confused, John, then I'm going to be really confused. <laughs> Place the bunting along the line that you've drawn, and the line you can draw it, you can do a big loop, you can do a big saggy loop and have more on. That's entirely up to you. Remember, this is once it's home, it's your project and you can do with it as you like. And now you, just see, to... you remember you said that you were going to, you put a big piece of um, <clears throat> bonder web there. I'd be doing little tiny buntings out of this to go in between the buntings. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Because you know, most buntings, people have got them at different, different sizes that's and you can see what the tiny idea. baby ones. And because they're the same tone but different colour of the bricks they would show up quite well that as well. That is a fantastic idea. Because you've got the bonder web on there already. You would have done. And if you take it into the salvage over here you could put the white bonder That's web That's what on I there. was actually going to say is don't, when you cut round it, cut around the whole of the outside yeah. first and keep that white because... It's a really good white. And it's a, it's a fantastic <coughs> weight of fabric. Really good. It's, it's really nice weight. We had a lady on the fans page who was doing my block of the week and she'd kept all of the edges of it and she was making one of the log cabins out of it and she was half, it was only block four or something and she'd run out of the white and she put on the fans page and she ended up with everybody sending her her white but honestly keep there. And it. And it really is lovely fabric. Well, it's the same as this. It's great. It's amazing fabric and, and with the, the these panels they've got quite a wide selvish on the edge mm. so I've used some of it for the Brilliant. actual cushion itself. But again this would work really well for the bunting. That would be I didn't think of that but that's um I But that's the great thing that. is that everybody's got a different idea of how everyone they would do will it. be different. 
Um, and all, all you do for the bunting is you, again, it's entirely up to you what stitch you use. I just mm. carried on. You could do a really fancy stitch, but I just did the zigzag stitch. Didn't even change it. I kept the two Perfect. one. And, and what would you just stitch on that line? Oh, you're going to show us. I was going Why to show you, yes. I would start from the edge but I follow that line and all I want to do is make sure that I catch the top of the bunting because I didn't sew round mine no. and then if they do start to peel bunting, really bunting, matter, bunting flaps bunting in the wind that. so yes it's not exactly. going to but if you want to then you can do a little tiny zigzag around all Perfect. of them and then just follow the line you've got about nine minutes left. oh okay no right. It cutting it, I have to. I know it's brilliant. So, oh, that's very neat. So, it's all it's done is caught the top of the buntings and secured them. And then, as I say, if they do if come they undone, do lift up, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't matter at all. Next thing we're going to do is put them all together, just put them in the position that you had them. It might not be the position I did have them. And as you see, I've got the bunting on the three sides now mm -hmm. because you could put it, but I think it would detract. I think detract. there's enough in there, yeah. I, I think so. And you have to now be very mindful of the quarter of an inch seam allowance. Because we're going to be putting a top and a base, if you sew right up to the edge, you're not going to be able to fit it in. No. So we go, and I've got a little trick for this as well. I know that this is a quarter of an inch on here because you showed me how to set mm -hmm. it so it's all set at it uh, but if you're not too sure about your what your foot your foot is then you just get a scrap piece of paper and I, I'm just going to say I've done them um, I'll, I'll use that for now if you need scrap fabric there's down the bottom yeah. shelf is that keep going down you'll I'll see just go downstairs hold on a minute oh can I use a bit there's a bit of tula there as well there you go. Lovely. And you need a tiny, tiny piece. Right. Oh, this is nice fabric. It's oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? I can't wait to demo it with it later. <laughs> oh, minus a little bit at the end. That's right. So you should have a straight line. So so use the foot that you're going to use for your seam. Zero six. There you go. Brilliant. Oh, well, your stitch length is one point six though. Oh, that's, yeah, um, yeah, no, I probably, yeah, I probably want that. There you go. Brilliant. And just sew down the side. And then sew down the end. Did I put, I did put 06, that looks tiny. Yeah. And then you'll be left with a little corner here. So I've sewn down one side and down the other, and I've created that 90 degree corner. Mm -hmm. So if I cut just a little bit this way, this side, and a little bit that side, I've then got my perfect intersection for my corner. Yes. So if I place it, you've not seen this before, no. have you? No. So if you place this in here and draw a dot, then I know that that's exact, that's revelate, that's, that's... Oh my goodness, yes. that's so clever. But that's... And that will work for any of your feet, because if you don't know if you've got a quarter of an inch foot, yes. and I think I've explained many times, I, I'm a real stickler for my pop sack, uh -huh. and the sack is the seam allowance consistency. So if you, whatever foot you start with, keep that foot. That is genius. But it may not be exactly a quarter no. of an inch. Now, if you do it this way... But if the consistency way, is so important, exactly. that's the thing. And then all I would do, I would probably transfer it onto card. Yes, just yes, so. you've got And it. then on the card, I would write foot A, because they've got numbers, mm. and quarter of an inch. And then put it in my little... I've got a little box that I keep all my things, and then just that's bring it so out. That's so clever. And then you know that... And you'd mark that on all four corners of the scene that you're about to In fact, you sew. mark it on every Everything. single piece, yes. which I should have done before. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so we would just turn it round and pop it in there. I'll just do one side. And then you'd line it up on the other side as well. So I would do it for every single piece. Perfect. And this one here, because it's got the roof, I would just draw a little line just to mark to my 90, yeah, yeah. To, because otherwise you might get line that out. Line everything up, yeah. 
So I, ha I would normally oh, have done it so on clever. all of them, but that would work. Well, that's, that's, that's your top tip for that's me my today. Top it's literally tip. blowing yes. my brain. I'm thinking how simple but so yeah. effective. And, and I'm sure there was probably a tool somewhere. Um, I'm sure. A little, uh, you know, a little plastic tool. Or, but no, it's a little scrap of liberty under my table. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to take that, so it'll be You're my well little scrap of liberty. <laughs> but th because you have to fit a square into the base, mm. if you don't leave that edge unsewn, you won't be able to fit it. Of Try course. as you might, it just won't fit. So then all you do... I've got about five minutes left for you to do. <laughs> all we do no is that take it over to the machine and then we start where that little dot is. And the great thing with the dot is that it's... because you've used the um, water erasable pen, it just shows through both sides, so you're fine. It does, actually. So we'll start which I've missed it completely, but that's fine. Um, and do a reverse stitch because you're going to be putting something in afterwards mm -hmm. you want to secure that end stitch go all the way to the end until we're doing that reverse stitch on both sides yes so i get to the end and then i do a reverse stitch and now i've got the top open perfect and the bottom open perfect. so that when i come to put my bottom in and again i would do exactly the same as that so I've that's just random, they're not mm -hmm. exact. And then I would put this along here. So it's so like a mini Y seam? Yes. Yeah. And then as I start sewing, I would sew from the dot. And then that way, and then what you would do after, you would just tuck your corner in just to make it neat. And then that will fit absolutely perfect. If you sew to the ends, you're not going to be able to fit it in. It just tries you might, it will not fit. And the whole point is you want to make it, if you see the, on here, you've got beautiful, neat corners, beautiful corners on the yeah. bottom. Yeah. So you would do that and you would put, how, how long are we for? Four minutes. Four minutes, okay. So you would put all the pieces together. So we would sew that one with that one. And I haven't done it exactly, but then that's, right. um, that's your, your, you'll see on the ones that the bunting, I think it's on the pet shop, the bunting does match up. It does. Perfectly. Because you've done that trick where you go in a quarter of a seam before you draw your bunting. Yes. Then, then, then it will work. So you would put all of them together. So we would sew that one to that one and then that one to that one. And then you would be left so with a square. So you'd have it as a cube. It would be a cube. And then you put your bottom uh -huh. in first and you would sew one edge yes take it out move it around and then do the one so it's a y seam but four times definitely yeah. and, and i would i wouldn't try and jiggle it around in the no. machine i would do a securing uh, i would do a reverse stitch to secure because then you have a little bit more wiggle room locking stitch would that work the same yeah perfect yeah. and then what i would do is i would forget once you take it out forget the seam that you've just Yep. sewn concentrate on the next side and line that up and then you tuck the corner in so that you can then sew along there mm -hmm. and and it's encased that corner and then it'll make it really neat so that's Perfect. what i would do so that's how you would do that one and then i will just show you through so the roof we're going to run out of time here that's john okay. so i've already you made really do what you can do i've already made one of the roof panels and these are super easy now you get so much wadding you do it's, it's huge. It, it is. There's the, the, a, a huge amount. You'll be able to use it for loads of other projects because mm. all you're going to use it's is... two pieces like that. It's two. For one of the door stops is two of those. Yeah. Now, I cut it a little bit bigger than I need it to because mm -hmm. I, I always do that and then I can cut it because you can never add on. Thank and this know. does... It's a little bit mm. wobbly. So you put them, the right sides together. Just make sure... What did you call them, John? Um, shingles. Shingles. I never knew they were called that. I'd have just I called them. Uh, that is the extent of my... Um... Right. <laughs> so I've learnt something from you today. So you would just make sure that they're going the same way and then flip one over and place it on top of your wadding. And then I'm going to leave... You can be as bold as you like as how small you leave it because the smaller you leave it, the less you have, to. you have to do. And then we take it to the machine and then we're going to do a quarter of an inch seam all the way around until I get back to that other dot. Stop at the edge and carry on. See my foot, my foot at home, it shows me when I stop at a quarter of an mm -hmm. edge. So I'm having to guess this, so I do apologize. It's not quite right. 
people are very forgiving, even if it isn't. I do like things to be as perfect as they can. And then we get back. And you do a locking stitch again yes. then? Or reverse, or reverse stitch. yeah. Mm. I tend to do a reverse, but a locking stitch would work. So we've sewn all the way and then you would cut the four corners off first, but don't cut too close to the stitches because you don't want to catch the stitches. No. But all we're simply doing is reducing the bulk in the corners for when we come to turn it the right way out. And then at the end that's got the opening, just cut the wadding off. Mm -hmm. But for the other three, cut quite close to the stitching. Oh, okay. Because that way... So what are you doing, about an eighth of an inch close? Yeah, an eighth of an inch. I don't know. <laughs> Two, three millimetres. And then go all the way round. You're going to tell me you've got no time now, aren't you? You're okay. That's okay. And then we're going to turn it in the right way. So push your thumb right the way to one corner and grab one of the corners. Mm -hmm. And then just pull it out. Because you have attached the wadding to the panels, that's going to stay put. It's not going to go anywhere. And then push your corners out. Oh, that's brilliant. And I wouldn't sew the opening closed. I would fold it in and let Top the machine again. I, I do love hand sewing, I really do, but if the machine can do the work for exactly. me, I let it. And then just top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around. Yes, so I would tuck that in and I would iron this. I would iron. an inch of its life yes. and then press all I the would way iron through. that and then do a, I'd go, at, well, I think it's probably a little bit more than an inch, but yeah, I've got a saying, I've got another, um, a, on my foot, I've got a little mark that I follow. So go all the way round and I would increase the stitch length. Right, Don't increase it too much it, though, yes. because you've still got a seam. So if you were doing a 2.4, usually you do a 3? I would do a three. 3. Well, normally I would do a 3.5 if I'm doing a top stitch, but with this I would definitely do a 3 because you have got that seam you need to close. Perfect. And obviously the bigger the stitch. Well, thank you so much. What a lovely demo. And such beautiful, it. beautiful, amazing houses. We've got the, today we've got a bundle, we've got the pet shop and the sweet shop, we've got the lovely sweet shop over there, we've got the pet shop. Um, you're getting your toy stuffing, you're getting your wadding, you're getting your instructions to make both of them. You're getting your bonder web as well as the two panels that go with each of these for $29.99. Um, you can also get them individually, which is $19.99. You're also getting the um, toy stuffing, the bonder web and the wadding, as well as the panel then for each one and the instructions. Um, so the sweet shop looks like this. And you can see all the beautiful detailing. That's what uh, Wendy was very kindly demonstrating there for us. Beautiful, beautiful demonstration there and a beautiful panel. You've also then got the pet shop as well. If the sweet shop isn't for you, we can get these individually. Again, you're gonna get a bag of the toy stuffing, a bag of wadding, some bonder web, the instructions, and this fabulous panel for $19.99. And if you get both together, which will give you both the panels, a set of instructions, set of bonder web, and the toy stuffing and the wadding, uh, that is definitely proving to be the most popular today. That one's $29.99. We do have two other houses which we've had on previously. One of these is the florist and one of them is the haberdashery. Both of these come in a bundle as well. So you're also getting your bag of stuffing and your bags of wadding. You've also got your two panels, one for each of the houses. I've got those the wrong way around. One for your haberdashery, one for your florist. Again, you're getting your wonderful thing of bonder web and the instructions on how to make it. And the kit for the two of those today is $29.99. These just are say, completely exclusive well? to Sewing Street as well. Yes. Sorry, John, um, to fill them because you'll you're hear that these yes. are a bit weighted. I know that they're out of stock at the moment, but it's well worth keeping an eye when the they pellets. do come the pellets and then if you make a little square bag for them and put them at the bottom um then it'll make them a little bit more stable wonderful noise you have it. it's lovely, oh, isn't it? that's great well thank you so much well, thank for that you. thank really you for a lovely it. demo you're back with us I at am. 10 o'clock yes. making these wonderful pillows i am i can't wait well i look forward to that and go enjoy your cup of coffee i will do while we redo the set we'll see you in a few minutes hi there my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, 
but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. That's the same with that. <laughs> My favourite piece of kit with the sewing is the seam with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. I came to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello, my name's Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years. 
which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Welcome back. I'm John Cole Morgan and I've got a fabulous hour ahead of me now. We've got some fantastic tools and different products that we've got. So I'm going to start off with this amazing, amazing light box. This is the A3 size. Um, we've got three different brightnesses and it actually shows really well there. Look at that. Nice and shiny. It's really, really fabulous then. Many of you have used light boxes before. Some of you haven't. So I thought I would do a nice little demo of exactly how it is. Um, you use a light box. I'm going to be jumping around a little bit for th a few seconds, so forgive me for this. Um, yep. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a small amount of bonder web onto my fabric. Um, and I had a pair of scissors here, and I've put them somewhere very safe. There we go. So I'm just cutting off a piece of bonder web. We've got that on today as well. Love our bonder web. And all you're doing now is that you've got two sides to the bond web. One side is a bit like greaseproof paper, as um, Wendy was saying a few minutes ago. So what I'm doing here is I'm just preparing something to show you how best to use the light box. So all I've done now is I've put the glue side towards my fabric. And I'm just putting, securing that to my fabric. So the great thing about this is the light box now comes into its own at this point for two reasons. So now I've got my bond web on this little piece of paper. Sorry, I've got my bond web on this piece of fabric. And I've now got my lovely pattern that I did for my applique. And I'm going to use the smaller light box because these are back in stock today. And these really are the most wonderful, wonderful products. These sold out so, so quickly the last time we had them on. Um, but they're just so fabulous because you can see that's how big it is. This is the size of my pattern. That's the size of my template sheet. So I don't need a huge amount of it. Um, and what I can do now is I am ready to use it. So I've put my little template on top there. And then I put this to the brightest that it can go. You've got three different, um, three different levels of light. I think that's the best way of wording it. And then what you do is you can pop that there. And I can see the, the light through that. There we go. It's very difficult on telly to be able to show you exactly how well these show up. There was a pen somewhere nearby. There it is. Uh, yep. Oh, that's the other one. There we go. Sorry, I lost my little prop there. So what you're doing now is you can see, I've got the light box on here, and then what you can do is you then trace on your little piece of paper using the light box and what's great is that you don't need to do photocopying you don't need to be doing anything fun like that you just literally follow the lines through your light box onto the piece of fabric now I know it doesn't seem like that on the screen you can see it but you can clearly see the fabric through here very very comfortably and you can tell that is what you're drawing out that's what my template looks like, and that's what I'm drawing out on it. And all I've done is I've just literally popped this in the space to be able to draw out what it is I need to cut out on my bonder web. And I just follow the line. I don't like drawing from that angle, so the great thing is, is you just turn it around to what works best with you. The A4 size is such a practical size because if you're doing, most templates come in a pattern on an A4 size like that. So getting the A3 is great. That's a brilliant size as well. But you don't really need something so big sometimes. Um, and you've got this perfect little um, pattern lined up perfectly on your A4 
because the page is A4, so the A4 size, you can tell why it was so popular the last time. And that is, I'm just, you can keep going however many you need. And then what you do then is you just simply take your pair of scissors, you cut out the bits that you need, and because you've got the bonder web on there, you just cut out on the line, along there, and I'm sure a lot of people are a lot quicker on it. And all you do is you just go through, you've got all your pieces on there. But the great thing is, is by having the light box, it's so much easier to be able to draw out on what you're doing on there. Now, the, with the, some of the light boxes that you do get that aren't... Um, as good as this one. The light is not evenly distributed, so you'll have a section here that's really bright and a little dull section and a bright section. You can tell on your page, this is completely consistent. You can see on the outside, you've still got light coming through there. It's a great, great quality item, this, and it is in such a usable size. A4, easy to do. And of course, it's LED as well, so you can put your hand on it at any point. It's not going to be warm. You're not going to be risking anything like that. They are such great quality, these. Really, really good. And it's not glass on the top. It's a reinforced plastic on here, so you can here you can tap on it. You can draw on it. It's not going to have a problem. So you don't have to worry about it coming in the post. It comes in the most fantastic little box that's got loads of support on it. So it's nice and safe when it gets through to you in the post. So that's not going to be a problem at all. Um, so yeah, just a really, really fabulous little item, this. And I love the fact that we got the A4 back in size because you can see it's perfect. The majority of the patterns that you get are that size. So it just perfectly fits on there and you can draw out whatever you need on there. But now if you did want something larger, we also have the A3, which is also the same great, great quality, really lovely light box, this. Oh. Now if you are doing pattern designs, like I seem to be doing a lot of these days, um, you are able to then get a slightly larger one. Now this one is really good for that, because although you've got your A4, your designs on the A4, sometimes you do actually need to have the two A4s together to be able to check you've got everything that you want on it. Um, and the great thing with this one is that if you have printed these double-sided for any reason, um, you can then trace out exactly what it is that you need and you don't need to worry about the photocopying of it. And again, you can see with the fabric, you can easily see the lines through it. Um, on the screen there, you can see that it's coming through and you can easily trace out what you need. Really, really bright lights on it, really great. And again, it's got the same LED lights and so none of it gets warm. It's not glass, so it's not gonna be a risk of breaking in any way. When it comes through to you in the post, again, really, really supported. It's a lovely box with great polystyrene on the side to keep it safe and secure. And you've got the three different light levels as well. So you can see that's your medium. And that's actually really effective because sometimes you don't need such a, a bright light light that's the medium and then that's the brightest of the bright you can see and you can tell as well even the the images so the this um, star effect here is actually on the other side of the page and you can tell even from the reverse it's such a great great light you can easily see through those it's a great way of doing it now we've also got our wonderful table lamp today I'm just going to take that plug out. So again, this is also an LED light. Um, it's pure light as well. So it's got that really good, it's sort of a blue look to it. So it's got that natural light, a daylight bulb on it. And I love this because some people have problems turning switches on and off. Now you don't have to worry. You've got a little place to put your pencil as well. Now this is phenomenal for any form of work that you're wanting to do. You can tell just how bright that is. So if you're doing any form of embroidery, you can rotate this wherever you want it to go. So if you want it to be quite close or a little higher or you want to rotate it either way, you can it, the, the, it rotates wherever you want it to go. So any form of color matching, because this is a, a, a daylight lamp, you haven't got that um, orangey look to it. So if you do look at a white fabric or something, it is going to appear completely white. So you can match your colours with it absolutely perfectly. 
But because uh, most of the t table lights that you get have got that orangey feel to it, which is called a warm light. Um, this is actually a bit more what, for what they would call a blue light, which is more daylight, which gives you, you can see on my shirt, all the different colors there so beautifully lit up. So when you put that on, it's got that really great way of being able to show the colors in its natural light. For making, if you're making models and things like that, it's really great to be able to do that. But I just love the fact that it's completely rotatable. So when you're sitting comfortably in a chair, sometimes you just need that light a little bit closer to you at that right angle. And you can tell, even by doing that, I'm moving it around and you can see you're getting it just at that right place that you need it. And it's so lightweight as well, easy to use and easily turned on and off by using the button pushing it down. And you can store the little pen to turn it on and off on the side. And you've got a nice little storage thing there. So we've got our little pin thing. Oh, that's magnetic. Can't do that. <laughs> so you can store loads of bits and bobs in there. I'd be putting my M&Ms in there. So every time I finish a good seam, get a little M&M and that's you sorted on there. A lovely, lovely little lamp there. And it's really lightweight and easily movable, but also sturdy that it's actually safe and secure wherever you put it down. And I love the fact that it maneuvers in different directions as well. Now don't forget as well, whatever you're buying today, if it be one of our gorgeous light boxes, even that A3 one, same price today, $3.95 PNP. You don't have to pay any more or any less buying a sewing machine or just a pair of scissors. Also $3.95 one day postage and packaging, not paying any more or any less with that today. Now what have we got next? Now this, I apps, I've got two of these in the studio because I am always dropping my pins. I have got them everywhere or I have people, or oh, I used to have people coming in and they used to drop their pins everywhere. And even now when you're doing quilting, you've got pins dropped everywhere. In the studio, they're everywhere as well. Now I absolutely love this because what's great about it is you've got all your pins left over everywhere and you've got them all over the place and we all do it we've all got it so all you do it just picks them all up it doesn't matter what pin we've got about seven different types of pin in here and it just picks them all up it picks up with the metal they're really really great to be able to get them i'm seeing that there are two or three that are not coming up which will mean they're not 100% metal. Don't know about these, these tiny little ones. Nope, they're not metal at all. So we've got some non-metal, but you can tell, and it puts them all in absolutely safely and securely. And literally it hoovers the pins up as you go. And you can tell they're not going anywhere. I love this because it just makes sure that you are able to pick up absolutely everything that you need to. And it's nice and safe and you've got everything all in one go. And then if you need to move them, you literally just push them all around into one area. Really great that. So I've got two of these because I think they're fabulous. These are a 10 centimeter rose gold magnetic pin dish. $8.99 for these today. And they look so good. And I absolutely, because the great thing about it being magnetic is it literally sticks to anything. So, so you can tell, even in our little lamp over here, you can stick it to the outside, it, it sticks into the middle there. You can tell if I do that, it's stuck. It's not going anywhere. So any magnetic surface you can put them on and it's really, really handy to just pick things up like that. Really, really great product that, love that. Now we've also got this wonderful rotating scissors uh, rack. I love these because how many of us do put our scissors in different places? Now you've got them all in one space and you can easily just rotate them around as you go. So these are the most fantastic little things, a great thing you can do them. We've got one over, I saw it two seconds ago. What did I do with it? There we go. So we've got all of these and it takes all different sizes of scissors as well. Really, really handy. It takes pinking shears as well. All of our scissors are collected on them and they're just a nice, easy way to store your scissors and easily be able to keep them in one space because we all put them everywhere. Next, we've got our wonderful beeswax. Now beeswax is fabulous if you're doing any form of hand sewing. Um, you pop your needle in it and it then put, passes the beeswax onto your thread and it just means your thread goes so easily through the fabric that you're hand sewing. 
Nice and traditional, these really, really lovely product, and it lasts for years, absolutely for years. This is now $2.49 today, the Millwood Beeswax here. Comes in this wonderful little protective case as well, which you would just pop your needle into the side, get a little bit on it, and then as you're sewing through, that beeswax passes onto your thread. It just makes your life a lot easier when you're doing um, English paper piecing, any form of turn applique any form of embroidery. It's just a nice, easy way of keeping your um, your thread full of um, movement and ease, and it just goes a lot easier. And anything that's going to make me do things a lot easier, I w have got to have them because life's too short to struggle. So that is the beeswax there, $2.49. And don't forget, we've got our one-day P&P, $3.95 all day. doesn't matter whether you're just ordering one of these or whether you're ordering one of our fabulous light boxes, all the same postage and packaging. Um, so that is there available for you, $2.49. Now, I'm very excited because, as if by magic, we've got some lovely wadding. I'm just double-checking which one we're looking at. There we go. So, I've got this wonderful poly down wadding today. We are loving our wadding these days because we've all got our finished products. We're ready to stitch them. We're ready to quilt them. They're ready to go. So, what we've been doing... So this is the king size poly down that we've got for you today. Three meters by three meters, which is 120 inches square. 100% polyester, which my friend Angie only ever uses because she's got some great um, effect with these. Because you get this, you can tell when it's in the bag, it's puffing out and giving you some extra um, a 3D effect, or I want to call it oomph. You get that extra bit of puff on your quilting as you do it, because this is just such a fabulous product. Um, this is available today, $29.99, and I know all of you have got loads of projects ready to go now, ready to quilt. You've spent all this time during lockdown making all these amazing things. The other good thing about doing this is not a lot of people do make 120-inch quilts, so what's great about this is you're buying such a huge piece, you can then cut this down, and you can make this into using smaller uh, smaller quilts. So I always li like buying the larger size wadding that I can and if I'm doing say a 60 by 60 inch quilt I then cut that section out of the wadding because you would need 65 by 65 roughly because you need some bits left over which gives me a nice big section then that I can then piece together or use one of those fusible tapes get them right back together and then you've got more quilt you can do more quilting projects with a larger piece like this. So I personally think you get a lot more value buying something bigger like this that at 120 by 120. So we've also got the poly down queen size today. This is 90 inches by 108. Really, really fabulous again. You've got that wonderful polyester which gives you that 3D oomph effect when you're doing the quilting on it. So this is 90 by 108 inches, uh, 228 by 274 in centimetres, and that's 21.99 today for that. Exactly the same as the king size, just slightly smaller. And again, it's very easy to cut this down to smaller projects because maybe you've only got two or three projects you want to do, but by buying something this large, you can then cut that down, and then the bits you've got left over, you can join together to make your quilt out of that. It's a really great price on these two today. This is the queen size, 90 inches by 108. And as all of you know, Hobbs is a fabulous brand, really, really good, and we've been using them for years, really great. But now we've also got our heirloom um, quilts today. That's the queen size. Let me grab the king size. We've got two sizes of this because I know all some of you like the polyester, some of you like the 80-20 blend. This one is normally the most popular. Um, I use this one myself. This is, oh is this cotton or is it mixed? 80-20, yes. So this is 80% cotton, 20% polyester. It gives you a really beautiful drape. It isn't, doesn't give you that 3D pop that the polyester does, but this does give you that softer, more vintage look when you do your quilting on it. You get that smoother feel to it. It's absolutely beautiful to use. This comes as a single piece of 120 inches square, which is just over three meters square. And that's 37 pounds 99 today, loving that. And it's absolutely brilliant. 
brilliant. I love this. And every time I read the back of this, it gives you all this information. Every time I read that, I get more and more information on how to do it. And the thing I love doing about this is that it does tell you how to care for it and what, how to wash it and use it. So make sure you keep on to those instructions that you on the back here and you keep them with your quilt so you always know how to care for your quilt afterwards. Again, these are 120 inches square. So with all the finished products you've got, projects you've got, this is a great one that you would then be able to cut up from your smaller projects if you haven't got something that large. We've also got the queen size available for you today, which is also the 80-20 weight. 80% uh, cotton, 20% polyester. Really, really well-known brand, Alien Premium by Hobbs. Really fabulous. Gives you an amazingly soft drape on this. $32.99 today for the queen size. That's 90 inches by 108. 228 centimeters by 274. Lots of wadding. I love wadding. Now, my favorite, favorite rotary cutter that I use is my, ooh, is my Fiskars Guillotine. I absolutely love this. Now, with this, what I love to show people is the different ways that you can use it. I'm going to pop that there. And what I love about it is, is I have problems with my hands and my wrists and using um, rotary cutters at times. Um, so this is a fantastic way of being able to combat that. Um, you can then get your rotary cutter. And when you're ready to use it, you just push that down and activate it. When you come to the end, this um, stopper is built into the ruler, so it's not going anywhere. And you've got another one on the other side. So it doesn't matter how you use the ruler, it's not going back and forth. It's not moving out of there. So it's nice and safe. Activating it is quite simple. You just apply pressure and you can see the blade is on the mat, so it's ready to be used. Now you can do this however works best for you. Be safe. It is a rotary cutter. I changed the blade a couple of days ago, so it's uber sharp. You can just see by it is just so effective. Really, really smooth effect on that. Really easy goes through. Um, you've got the measurements, it's a six and a half inch ruler this way, 24 and a half inches. Um, you can't cut anything sort of less than an inch and a, uh, inch and a quarter because obviously you've got this mechanism in the way, um, but you can cut everything past that up to six and a half inches and it is really, really, really easy to use. So you just simply pop your hand down on that and go across. There have been days where I'm really struggling with my wrist, so all I do is I put it on my arm and I go like that. I don't recommend that as a, a usual course, but it does just show that this is very user friendly. As long as you're providing a constant force on this, you're going to be easily be able to cut whatever fabric you need. With a new blade, I can cut up to eight layers on this. It is my shop cutting piece that I use most of the time, um, and mine's lasted me about three, four years, and I have been using it constantly um, and cutting loads and loads of fabric. So it's very, very durable. It uses uh, none of these markings have worn off at all. It's a really durable um, cutter and ruler. And again, with all of these, it's a rotary cutting blade, so change it as often as you need. And it is really, really simple to activate it. You just apply pressure and do that. If you are going to use it to travel, I do suggest you keep the box, because the box thing just keeps your blade safe. Um, and if something goes on top of the blade, it's not going to activate in your car. I would say, ask me how I know, but then I'd have to confess that I knew what that funny mark in the boot of my car was. And I won't do that because hubby may be watching. But it's so easy to use. You can just see how effortlessly it goes. And it really does help you if you have any form of issues with your wrists or arms or anything. It does make your life a lot easier. And we've got a fabulous changing tool for this as well. So this tool is absolutely brilliant. Um, you would pop the when you take this out, you've got that wonderful little section at the top there. And what happens is at the back of that, it puts your old blades in it. So when you take your blade off, you just literally undo the screw there, lift that up, um, and you've got the blade there. So that blade has a little magnet. So that magnet activates into that bit there. And you literally just press it on and it goes in. And then you leave that on the section there. You slide this blade up and the blade just pops in. I would show you, but I only changed the blade on this two, three days ago. So it doesn't need a new blade as yet. But it is so, so easy to use, really, really safe. And the great thing is, is once you've got all your old blades in there, um, it is then all safe and secure. So if you need to dispose of them, you can just recycle them then very, very easily. You don't have to worry about it going in the bin or anybody being harmed by old rotary cutter blades. So 
this is good. You've got five blades in here. So it's $29.99, but it's not just for the guillotine. It's for any Fiskars product. Any 45 mil Fiskars product, you'll be able to use this with as well. Absolutely brilliant. And they are titanium blades as well, which also give you that little bit of extra life on your blades because the titanium does last that little bit longer. Um, and it gives you a nice smooth cut as well. And you definitely can feel the difference whenever you've changed the blade. But when you change the blade for a titanium one, for crying out loud, it just goes through the roof then. It's brilliant. Really great kit. Absolutely fabulous this. I really highly recommend this one. And I definitely, the rotary cutter is the way to go on that. Now we've also got our Soline glue pens. Now I adore adore these. I only use these for any form of English paper piecing. They are so, so easy to use. Really, really simple. Um, with all of these, what you would be doing is normally you would baste your stitch, you would use stitches on the back of an English paper piecing piece. With this, all you do is you take the pen, you glue down on the card a little bit in from the edge, and then all you do is you fold your fabric over onto the card and the glue holds the fabric down to the card. Now I did about 900 hexagons about three years ago this is still holding and they've been in an airtight container for three years they're still holding firm I checked on them two days ago they're still great still holding firm and the great thing with this is that if you have sealed it down and they do come loose all you do take the lid off put the little glue pen down one little tiny line and it re-secures your fabric on it and when you finish using it and you finish your project you just pop it through the washing machine and all the residue all the little marks they just completely wash away because it's a dry uh, it dries clear and it's completely water soluble you're getting not only the pen but you're also getting one of the um, cartridges to change now I get about 40 hexagons on this one and a half inch hexagons out of each one of these so you'd be having about 80 different hexagons on there and I'm very very generous on it on my hexagons I think cat was getting about 55 of them on there so it's entirely up to you how much glue you use how little they're just the most fabulous 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 time-saving mechanism for any form of English paper piecing, but also for any form of applique. So once I've cut all these little pieces out, if I didn't want to use the bonder web, all I would do is cut my shapes out, put that down, put the glue pen on the back of it, put the glue pen on, attach that to my um, fabric that I was English paper, uh, uh, appliqueing and then just do the stitch around it because this is water soluble it just washes out afterwards so you don't need to use the bond web if you don't want to it's just a, it's so multi uh, functional very very versatile this Solang glue stick I love them and I've got loads of them they're brilliant so we've got those there for you for $6.99 today oh I'm hearing that the A4 light box this has only just come back into stock today and a quarter of the stock that we've got is sold out already if you are having any problems with finding it on the website at the moment, if you just type in that code just there, which is golf, uh, sorry, D for Delta, G for Golf, Z for Zulu, W for Whiskey, 58. If you just type that in the search engine, you'll be able to find that as well. Otherwise, just type in pure light, L-I-T-E, then both the boxes will come up and you can pick the one you like. Website Gremlins do come along every now and then. We're all doing our very best in the current climate. Brand new in today, again, having just sold out so quickly the last time. Not surprised it's selling so well, but if you are struggling to find it, type that code in or just type in pure L-I-T-E, one word, and it'll come up there on the screen for you. Sorry about a few issues. I'm so pleased you can bear with us during these times. So the next thing we're doing... Oh, the iron finger. Now, I love this little iron finger, which is so great to be able to do. If you're doing... We've got the finished... Uh, the box up product like that. We've got the iron finger there, and then here's one out of its little packaging. These are fabulous. It's really, really good. If you're needing to sew open, sew open, listen to me, I can't even talk today. If you need to press any of your seams open, all you would be doing is you would be popping your, your finger on there, rotating your fabric across, assuming there's a little seam there. You then take your iron, and it goes up to, what, what um, temperature was it? This sort of, up to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, um, centigrade, 446 degrees Fahrenheit. And anything you need to do is you would just, obviously my iron is off at the moment for a change. You would just then press your seam open going that way. If you're doing any form of pushing out and um, wanting to get a crea uh, create a, uh, a nice firm edge, you would then just pop your 
iron over there, you could go through along there and you would just use the nose of this blade to be able to create that beautiful straight line along the way, helping your iron along to be able to do it. If you need to flatten your ends as well, if you want to create a sort of semi-permanent stitch um, press line as you go, that's an easy way of doing it as well. Um, and then also if you're wanting to do that, you're not wanting to use the spatula end, you just roll it. Do that wonderful little roll and you get that done there. That gets it nice and firm ready for you to press as you like. It's a really, really fabulous little tool this. I love these. Um, and it's got lots, of, uh, up to 230 degrees Celsius. That's a lot. And hopefully you won't be needing your iron that hot. So that is the Clover Iron Finger today, $15.99 today. And that's what it looks like there. Really lovely little product that. Now next we've got our June Taylor basting spray. Most of us have got lots of finished products now and projects ready to go and be quilted. So how can we not uh, bring you the basting spray when we're bringing you all of our lovely waddings? This is a really lovely product. My favorite thing about it, other than the quality and how well it glues everything together, is the gimmick factor. Listen. You know when you do spray painting, it's got that little ball in it. I'm sorry, I know it's really silly, but everything gives, everybody's got different um, things they love about it. The quality of this is fantastic. So what you would do is you would put your um, backing layer down. I always spray the basting spray onto my wadding. Other people spray it onto their backing, whichever works best for you. You would spray that down onto your backing, put the wadding on top, get that nice and flat. Then you spray this onto the wadding again, or onto the top, whichever you prefer, and put, then you'd be able to press everything nice and firmly together, be able to get that nice beautiful um, flat surface ready for you to hand quilt or quilt on your machine. Really, really great. These must be used in a ventilated room, so please make sure that you don't use this in your enclosed sewing area or sewing st uh, TV studio where we are now, otherwise I would demo it for you. This eliminates the, um, the need for pinning because the tackiness of it is so good. I always add that extra pin just because I'm a safety nut. I like to make sure that it doesn't do anything funny or have any movement but it is such a great great product it holds everything beautifully together but then once you finish your quilting all you do then is you just pop it in the washing machine and it just washes away the glue is not there it's a, a semi-permanent tacking glue and it just washes away once you've got the product once you finish quilting it really really fabulous this and that's £12.49 Oh, we've had a message in from Sharon. Good morning. Wanting to see the two king size waddings again. Absolutely. Um, we've got the, which, um, I'll do the heirloom first. Oh, no, I've got the poly down here. Sorry, couldn't see which one was which there. So we've got our wonderful poly down here. Three meters, which is 120 inches square, polyester wadding. This is one of my friend Angie. She's been quilting for about 45 years and she is a brilliant quilter. She only ever uses the polyester one because it does give that 3D effect on it when you're quilting it. You can just tell in the bag, it's just bursting to take shape. You can just get that wonderful feel when you do that. This is $29.99 today for the polyester one. But we've also got the 8020 wadding as well. Also by the fabulous Poly Down Company. Uh, stay. Stay, thank you. We've also got the um, 120 square wadding here. Uh, this is 8020. This is by Hobbs, um, Heirloom Premium. So this one has got a lovely soft feel to it. Um, it's got that beautiful drape. You can tell when quilts have got the 3D effect on the um, polyester. It doesn't drape quite as nicely. This one just stands out and goes ping. And this one just kind of goes ping. It's got that same feel in the same, but this just drapes a little bit nicer, I think. And this is the one I prefer. I use 100% cotton or 80-20 all the time because I just think it gets that wonderful vintage look to it. It's got that old uh, world feel to it with that traditional quilting. Now, King Size is huge. I've been asked to take it out the bag. I feel like I've just lost a bet with someone. Now, I know people are looking at it, $38.99, that's a lot. People think that's a huge amount. Now, let me show you what it is. I did get asked a question on social media this week, would I prefer to go and do Strictly or with a go in the jungle? I feel like I'm going in the jungle now because this could go horribly wrong. But look how huge this is. Look at the, how huge this is. So I'm going to hold this in half. So this is half. Let me get this folded out. So... This is in half. You can see this is two layers. That's in half. 
So it literally, if I had Susan here, I wonder if I've got something heavy that I can put this down on. No. I kind of want to go from the, oh. It's huge, I don't know how, how to hold it, it's enormous. So that's the width of it, you can tell. It's absolutely huge, but then I'm gonna cover the entire studio. I'm gonna open it properly. Thank goodness I left the iron off. If I'm gonna do it, so you can see this is now half. Right, let's, let's do this completely. The cushions are going. The cushions are going on the floor just for a moment. I'm gonna show you just how big this is. Now this is only half, okay? This is only half. What could possibly go wrong? This is only half, okay? We're not even, so you can tell, this is only in half. So, and this is only half of it there, but of course, I'm gonna open it up. Oh, I've got the fold in the wrong place. Of course I do. It's enormous, so I'm gonna now unfold this this way. Well, the great thing is we've got wadding for days now in the studio, so I'm gonna drop it down there. You're not just getting a tiny little bag, you're getting a huge amount of, of wadding with this. Now, honestly and truly, when I buy wadding, I always buy the king-sized ones because most of your quilts, they're never going to be this size. You know, there isn't a bed. This is still not all the wadding. You know, I cannot literally, our studio is not big enough. You can see it's a little wadding mountain with just a little John face at the top of it. So to give you an idea, this is me, this is shoulder to shoulder me, and that's, it's huge. But the good thing with this is what I, what I love about this, and I love about the price of this, is that it's 120 inches square, so that's nine square meters. It's three meters by three meters. If you're making a baby quilt, most baby quilts are a meter square. You're gonna get nine baby quilts out of one of these. If you're making a 60 inch quilt, you can make two, hang on, one, You'd make four 60 inch quilts out of this, if I'm not wrong. Yes, make four out of that. That's a huge quilt, 60 inches is a massive quilt. You're gonna make four and be able to do this. And then when you look at it that way, that you've got four 60 inch quilts out of this for 30, 37 pounds 99, then all of a sudden you're looking at it and thinking that's less than 10 pounds for the wadding for my 60 inch quilt. So you can tell it's a really enormous, enormous amount of wadding here. I've completely ruined the set, but it is so much fun, I love it. Because the thing is as well, even when you do go into the shops and you see them, you can't really open them and do things like this because the shopkeeper would just look at you and go, you bought that. But it's great that I can do this for you and we can, you know, I know we're making a joke of it, but it is such a huge amount of fabric and I think it's important that you then can see what you're getting. And I do think it's important to recognize 120 inches square, that's huge. That's an enormous amount of fabric. And now I'm leaving it there, it's Joe's problem. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> so this is the bag of the poly down. Oh, sorry. This is the heirloom king size quilt that we've just seen. Enormous, huge, huge amounts then. Now the poly down that we've got as well, this is exactly the same size. You will forgive me for not opening this one as well because it's 100% polyester. I'm not quite sure whether it'll spark across the room. It's just, no, that was silly. That was a wrong thing to say. Sorry, that was totally wrong. This is a fabulous, fabulous one. And honestly, my friend Angie, she will only ever use this and she is a staunch advocate for only using polyester because you get that wonderful 3D effect on it. This one's $29.99 and again you're going to get nine one meter square quilts out of this. It's a huge amount of wadding and most people do do their baby quilts in this polyester because it's easy to wash. You pop it in the washing machine, easy, quick, done, sorted. And unfortunately with babies there's a lot of washing so you are going to need something that's a bit more durable on that as well. So this is a fantastic way of being able to do projects like that as well. $29.99 for that. Again three meters by three meters. An enormous amount of poly uh, wadding there. Really, really great value, $29.99 for that one. Now, if you didn't want the queen, the king size, remember we've also got the queen size as well, which is, sorry, Sharon, you probably didn't want all of this, but you're getting it. The queen size, again, we've got today is 90 inches by 108. 
So this is also very, very big. So the 108 inches, that's the width of our normal extra wide backing. So you know how huge that is. So this is going to be two and a half, uh, 2.28 meters. But it looks so tiny in the bag. But once you unwrap it, it's really, really beautiful. You can tell you're getting a really great quality quilt there by using this one. I absolutely love this. It's my preferred choice of using the 80-20 or the 100% cotton. Absolutely love these. This is also by Hobbs. Um, and that one's $32.99 for the queen size. But if you do want to stick with the polyester, we've also got the queen size polyester here, 100% polyester. This one is, I can't remember how much is it, $21.99. This is also 90 inches by 108, 228 centimeters by 274. Phenomenal size. And again, really great for baby quilts. Any form of project you want your quilting to be a little bit more puffed up, really, really great. And what's also good about using this is it's nice and light. So a lot of the quilts that you do do, which are slightly bigger, they do become quite heavy so this is a really lightweight one as well so it's easy to keep the weight down on it so there we go now don't forget today we mentioned our early bird earlier some of you may not have been here for that so I'll recap what you're getting today you're getting two packs of three 45 mil rotary cutters by so easy these are completely universal for any rotary cutter that holds a 45 mil blade the two of these together with our early bird sale you're gonna be saving four pounds getting these today really great value you're getting six blades in there in total little bit over two pounds a blade but they last for so long and the minute you change a blade you know you've been look missing out because it's such a great great feeling putting a brand new rotary cutter blade in and just slicing through your fabric so much easier these have been selling really really well this morning last time we had them on they sold out with our early bird they're $13.98 today and don't forget we've got our one day P&P $3.95 it doesn't matter if you're just getting these or you're getting one of our fabulous light boxes or sewing machines all of those are $3.95 for your postage and packaging all day We had Deborah. Oh, right. So Deborah is messaging in today. She just bought for us today for the first time. Hello, Deborah. Um, she missed our 8 a.m. show for the door stops. But don't worry. What you do, pop onto YouTube later on this afternoon. Um, and everything that's on, um, everything that we do as a demo or anything that's on the show, we'll be able to then have on our YouTube page. And a couple of hours after the show, they just upload and do all the technical bits, which I don't know about. But they come up on the YouTube page. So every single show, going back to Valentine's Day, you'll be able to catch up on. So if you bought something and you want to see how best to put them together, there's always the show on there that you can catch back up with. And sometimes we do repeats as well. So to, it might be a repeat on tomorrow. I don't know what our repeats are for tomorrow. Do we know? Oh, so it'll be in our, our, our the 8 o'clock show. If you don't get to catch on YouTube, will be a repeat tomorrow at our 12 o'clock show. So you'll be able to catch it then as well. So what we'll do is I'll just show you what we did today is our pet shop and our sweet shop. In case you didn't catch them, these are what we were making, these fabulous little door stops. We've got the pet, uh, the sweet shop here. The detailing on it is so incredible. And I love the fact when you look in the window, you've got all the little sweeties, all the little jars of sweets and everything. Love that. So that's our little sweet shop that we had. But we've also got our little pet shop. This is the back of the pet shop with the kitty cats playing on their little toy. You've got the little doggy sitting outside and the lovely bird on there with a the wonderful window. And I love the bunting detail because on both of them you can see you've got the bunting but each shop has a different color different colorway with the bunting and the details in these windows are so clever as well you've got the parrot all the dog treats and all the little dog foods up there all have the word woof on them as well really really great and the little um, goldfish in the window I think is so sweet as well actually I've just noticed sorry I've only just noticed now the sign there says open but it's on a dog bone which I love Oh my goodness, and the little tension detail there, we've got our little open sign on our um, sweet shop, and that's got a little sweet on it, which I love. I think that's so cute. So these are available today as a bundle together. So you're getting a huge amount of that. You're getting the stuffing, the wadding, the instructions, the panels for both of them, and Bonderweb for $29.99. If you wanted one on its own, so just the pet shop, for example, those are also available on the website. So do check out www.sewingstreet.com. You'll have the little YouTube page to start with. And then below that, you'll have all the products that we've got available on today's shows from our eight o'clock show all the way up to our 11 o'clock show. But don't forget, we've got our A4 light box back in stock today. 
and that's been selling really, really well. So if you want one, make sure you check out because until you paid for it, it's not yours and someone can take it out your basket. Next, we've got our lovely Aurifil. Now, I adore Aurifil thread. This has got a great feel to it when you are um, sewing or quilting. This is all 50 weight, so the 50 weight is fantastic for piecing. It's really, really good if you're going to be doing any form of embroidery or doing any form of quilting, especially dense quilting. It works very, very well with that. Um, I'm just going to get them all out because the colours on these are so vibrant and so stunning. And the way the studio lights catch this, it's brilliant because you can just tell that beautiful, beautiful glow on the, fa on the, th the threads. They're really good. And it gives that lovely little sheen. These are all um, 200 metres each, 100% cotton. Uh, Aurifil premium cotton, 50 weight, but just look at the sheen on this. You can just tell as you're doing any form of dense quilting, you're going to have that gorgeous shine on them. Just look on the blue there, how beautifully that pops out on there. It's really pretty. So this bundle's been put together exclusively for Sewing Street. We've all got, uh, they've gone through and picked out all these exclusively for Sewing Street. £33.99 for this, but remember you're getting 2,000 metres of thread here. All 50 weight, fantastic quality, all from Italy, um, Aurifil's in Milan, and it's just such a beautiful feel. The thread is so lovely. If you're doing any form of hand sewing as well, this is really, really lovely to work with. And it's got that gorgeous feel on it. And the colours, oh, just look how beautiful the colours are. You can easily find a project to be doing with all of those. Fabulous different colourways. You've got these beautiful grey, cream. All the colours are on the back there with the different numbers, because I know a lot of people are on are Aurifil um, uh, followers so if you do want to know the codes double check the website as to what they are we've got this all on there but the thread is so beautiful and because you've got the 100% premium cotton by Aurifil you're not going to end up with any lint build up in your machine um, we all know when we're cleaning our machines as we go you end up with those lint uh, I call them lint bunnies um, and not the chocolate type unfortunately um, these then it eliminates you getting those and it extends the life of your um, machine a little longer because obviously you're not cleaning it as much and you don't have as much lint flowing around your machine you don't have to service it quite as often as well. So it does help having really great quality thread when you are doing that type of piecing as well. And for quilting and embroidery, you get the incredible detail. And you can see the shine just having it on the, on the set there, being able to see just how beautiful that shine is. Imagine that being in your product when you're doing it as well. So now we're going to have a little break while we redo the set. We've got um, Wendy back after the break doing our wonderful little puff cushions. So we will be back in a minute or two. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. 
post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw, and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favorite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello, my name is Jenny McCreary and I am a guest designer on Sewing Street. A little bit of an introduction into me and who I am. I've got some questions here I'm going to answer. Um, what do I specialise in? Dressmaking, 100%. It's my favourite thing. Made this wee guy behind me here. I absolutely love it. Um, bikinis, underwear, dresses, hair accessories. Does that count as dressmaking? Maybe not. I love homewares as well, to be fair. I'm not an expert in homewares. I would say I'm an expert in dressmaking. Um, quilting is the one thing I do not do yet. There's still time. I'm really worried. I don't want to get into quilting because I know that it is, uh, there's just so much to it and I'll get I'll get right into it and then might leave dressmaking behind. I'm not really finished with dressmaking yet. So dressmaking is my thing. I got into sewing. This is quite a common one, actually. It was for Halloween costumes. So I wanted to be the Tooth Fairy, my mum had a sewing machine, she knew how to use it and I used it to make a tutu, that was the first thing I ever made and then I realised I loved clothes, I loved fashion and I then went on to study at university after school so I studied fashion business and now I do it for a job, what a dream. Something unexpected about me that is sewing related. Um, Probably back in 2011, I think it was, when the royal wedding was about to happen in April. It was Kate and Will's wedding. Um, a customer of the place I worked at the time challenged me to make the dress live. So nobody knew what the dress looked like and I made it in eight hours live while I was watching. So everyone else was having a nice wee day watching the royal wedding. And I was like sweating, it was roasting. Um, some newspapers came to watch as well. Yeah, that was interesting. I made it in eight hours. Uh, sewing tip that I would share with you guys. One thing that I share with my customers a lot is not to get too hung up on, on trying to learn everything. You'll never, you'll never know everything about sewing. It's impossible. There's so much new stuff happening all the time and new techniques and new tools and all that sort of thing. Um, just give it, a, give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? See, as long as you're using a fabric that's not like wild expensive, and it's not going to be too much of a loss if it doesn't quite go to plan, then just give it a go. You'll learn so much just by giving things a go. Um, my claim to fame, that is a hard one. Oh, wait, obviously my claim to fame is being a guest designer on Sewing Street, right? That's it. I do actually tell people that all the time when they say, tell me something unusual about you. That's it. Um, another claim to fame, a sewing related one, I own the UK's only sewing tuition franchise. I suppose that's nice. No one else has that. Um, I've, I've done other TV before as well. I've done some game shows. Um, you can look it up if you want. I have done some game shows before. I love TV. It's great fun. I am looking forward to sewing with you guys soon on Sewing Street. Welcome back. I'm John Carl Morgan and I've got the fabulous Wendy Orlando in today. Really, really excited. And today we're making these fabulous cushions. I adore 
adore these, loving them. And I've always wanted to learn how to do these. It's one of those projects that I've looked at and thought, oh, I really want to learn how to do that. And of course, then you run away and you never get time. So today we've got two different bundles. I'll start with this one. So with each of the bundles, you're going to get the wonderful set of instructions um, and you're getting a big bag of stuffing. Each one of the bundles are doing that. I'm not going to be able to do that because if I do that, I can't. And let me show you this colorway. So this is this colorway over here. You're so you're getting a meter and a half of fabric. You're getting a half meter of the white. You're getting a meter. What have we called this one? This is called teal. So you're getting a meter of the teal and you're getting this fabulous design bundle that we, uh, the design squares that we do exclusive to Sewing Street. And just look at them. They are so good. You're getting 40 different coordinates here and there is loads left over. And with the great thing with the uh, things that are left over is Wendy's made a whole load of beautiful things to show us as well. She brought lavender from her own garden. It smells beautiful in here today. Really, really great. So this is the, the panel then for the first colorway that we've got just here. But if you fancy... Live telly, what could possibly go wrong? So that's the bundle you're getting there with the... Um, what have you called this bundle? The teal bundle there. I think I'm just going to put that over there because it's not liking it. So that's our wonderful teal bundle. But if you want something with a bit more pizzazz, with a bit more rainbow in it, we're getting the wonderful bag of stuffing. You're getting the um, set of instructions. You're also getting a half meter of the white and you're getting a meter of the yellow. And then you're getting this wonderful set of design squares as well. But just look how fabulous they are. And you're going to have loads and loads left over. So if you didn't want to do a rainbow, you can then do them as all the colors that you like. Perhaps you just want to do purples and reds and oranges. You can choose because we've given you loads of different fabrics that you can then make your own choices as to how you want to do them. But what a wonderful bundle. So now we're going to do a quick video on how to buy and we get Wendy on the set. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. It's so squishy. I love it. I love it. Wendy, welcome back. Did you have a good break? I did, thank you. Good. So, do you want to show me what we're going to make first? We're going to make the... Well, actually, we're going to make a little one today. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Only because um, in the last show, I ran out of time, so I don't want to do it for this, because <laughs> I do want to show everyone how to make them. So, we're going to be making that. Perfect. First thing you need to do is... Can I go on that? Of Sorry. course. Is so this is the teal bundle. This is the teal bundle that I've actually and that was your finished out. product. That's it. I love the way that because I love the way you've used all four of them, but you've got loads left over as well. Because I see you using these to do all your coasters. These lavender bags might have to go in my bag. They're you can stunning. Have them. You can oh, have that's them. so kind. They're gorgeous. Now these aren't in the instructions, but it's just nice to know that you've got so much left over and that you can actually then make other things with it because the, here you're using... The um, lavender ones are on the blog and I will be getting the other ones up Perfect. later so that if people do want to see how to make it. Oh, brilliant. So you've got 25 different, what are we calling these? Puffs. 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 25 puffs on there, leaving you 15 out of the panel. It's great. And I did use all of them. Yes. So the, the little um, the zip pouch. Oh, you've I've, used one on each side? I've used three for that. And so on the lining. That one I haven't. <laughs> That's all right. But just to show you that you do only need to use you two. You only need to use just two. Just put a lining. But I just thought it was really nice. If I was using it as a purse, it's nice to see the colour on the inside. But that's my um, 
poopy bag. And these the are dog, on your blog? So I put that. These will be on the blog. Perfect. Um, but the, the lavender ones are at the moment, but I've just not had time to That's get the rest okay. on there. All the pictures are done. I just need to get them up. But I so we just that. follow you on social media and we'll yes. find you from there. Yes. And the great thing is you've got the loads of different co uh, coasters as well. And you've just put your own fabric on the back. So uh, the cushion. That's the fabric from the, everything that I've used has been from the pack. Perfect. Because the white you only use for the back of the puffs. Yes. And it's a whole metre. Oh, got half metre. Half metre. Half metre. It's half metre. That's yeah. it, because yeah. you get a metre of that one. And all the instructions on how to make the cushion, are, for the cushion, are obviously included. They are on the, uh, these are included in the bundle as well. And really clear instructions as well. Lots of pictures, which I love, because I like pictures. I don't, I think I sometimes really good. when you see a finished product, getting there is the hardest thing. So if you've got a step by step, at least you can check when each step of the way, way yes, because exactly. otherwise you'll get to the end and find out that it just looks completely have different. Yes. The first thing that to do is cut out, I would cut all the squares out. Yes. If, if you want to just cut 25 of them, that's fine, but I would cut. But remember me saying about the, the previous show, the edge. Yes, you get yes. Loads. Loads of that. And I've used this for the piping effect oh. on there. It's not proper piping because it hasn't got a cord in it. But I like the fact it's got an effect on it. I think that's really clever. So I use that. Because we're all to. trying to save fabric as well, because then that half metre of white gets to be left as the half metre of white. I like it. That, that's why I you only use it for the back <clears> of the puffs. So definitely. Cut them all out. You don't need to be as careful cutting these out. If, if you do go in slightly, it's fine. Try and be as accurate as you possibly can. But I use scissors. I didn't use... Um, I didn't for these. Because uh, I just selected random and just cut them out. But I would cut them all out if I was you. But definitely keep the, the edging. Because they've only put the wording on a little bit of it. Exactly. So you've got so much there. So cut out. And then lay out 25 yes. um, of your choice. Now, I don't do random. I don't do random. I'm sorry. <laughs> I gathered that. I don't. Sorry. So, so with with the teal one, because <clears throat> the teal is around the outside, yes. I didn't want any of the teal puffs close to the, the oh. edge. I wanted the teal to be able to pop out. But it does pop because you've got these four teal in the middle, and this gorgeous teal on the outside. So it actually does draw your eye in there. Didn't think of doing a teal in the middle there. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would, that would have would, thrown you would, out. Because I didn't have five of that one. Ah, there you so, go. But I will <clears throat> make another one and put that. That would have been no, that would have been better, <laughs> wouldn't it? But I didn't want teal round the eye. I mean, you have Completely got teal. Completely understand. But I, I just wanted to be able to draw but, that eye. But that's what's so great about these projects. You can do them the way you like them. Because for you, this type of order works really well. For other people, they hate it. I'm so trying to do random. I no, really am. No, you must but, do what works for you. You must never change. But what the good you thing do. is, there are four of some of them. There's not four of all of them. Mm -hmm. But there was four of these, and then there's four in the corners. Because I've noticed here, all. there's two of those. Those. And two so, of two, uh, two of those as well, oh, okay. and then two of these. But I used you that use that as the else. lining for this. I use it for something. Yeah, it's like one of those um, memory games. Oh no, it's not. I think I it's may the have back used, of that. That's it, yeah. <laughs> but so you can get some sort of pattern if you want to, or if you can just pick up any and use it, that's fine. Is so that I, left? We have single figures left of oh, the no. teal cushion. It's brilliant. That is my favorite. But that's the great that thing. It's such a great color. And it goes perfect in a conservatory. It does. Or I don't know if you've got one in your bedroom. I want to know what's in your bedroom, but I've got a little chair in the corner. Mm -hmm. That we would do just too. Yeah. A lot of people do have Looking them, don't the they? Yep. Just to pop it in the chair. Exactly. And they look really luxurious. They do. But you will be surprised they are so easy so to make. Comfy as well. They are. Because I'm just feeling this and it's very smushy. I love it. And it's quite big. It but is a big cushion. It does only take an 18 inch cushion, and that's because because you stuff your puffs, yes. it draws it in. Everything in. Brilliant. So go on, show me how we do this. Right, we've cut all the shapes out, we've got yep. them all in our 25, and take a picture. Most fam camera uh, phones tip. have got cameras on. Yes. Take the amount of times I've laid everything out and the dogs come running through and, and messed it all up. So just take a picture, and then you can revert back to it when you need to. First thing we're doing is Cut out all your 20, uh, 25 of your squares, yes. and then you do need to cut out 25 squares with the backing fabric. Perfect, and the size and of I, that's in the pattern It already, is. So. I would use a rotary cutter for that, because right. that's the one that you do need to have as accurate. Uh, yeah, as accurate as you can. As I say, the front one, and you'll see why in a moment, doesn't need to be quite as accurate, but the back one really does. So the first thing that we do is we prepare this back of the cushion. Mm -hmm. And 
I love the fact you use that little board. Because we sell That's them the and they size. often got little sloths on them. No, they're fabulous and I do exactly the same. They're really great. These are so handy. Really, really good. Because it's got everything. You know, I'm gonna and these are on the website, there. so do have a little look. If you type in the word sloth, S-L-O-T-H, it'll pop up on there. They are really, really good. Even Wendy's using it. See. I, that goes everywhere with me because it can just fit in my bag. <coughs> Pardon me. What you want to do is, I would prepare all, everything to start off with and again it's one of those projects that you can do the preparation one night then you can do in the sewing and then you can stuff the next night and then it gives you something to do each night yeah. or you can do it all in one go get your 25 squares and what you want to do is mark the center it isn't crucial if you do you don't have to do this but I again I like things as neat as I possibly uh -huh. can and to do that I would leave the ruler where it is and just move the square perfect so I'll do it on one that hasn't got it on there so I've placed it down and I do apologize I will be having words with the person that done my nails because it's so <laughs> chipping so I shall have a word myself later and then we mark the center point on all four of the sides you'll be pleased to know <coughs> I have warmed up John <laughs> I'm very pleased <laughs> I had a nice warm drink and my hands aren't so cold now so we've marked all four corners and this is just going to be where we put the pleat placement. Perfect. Fold the square in half and then we're just going to cut a slit. Now this is to stuff the puff. Yep. You don't have to do it this way. You can, I've tried it both ways. Believe me, this is the easiest way. You can stuff the puff first uh -huh. and then join all stuff puffs but it's not pretty because you really have to push down. <clears throat> so especially, again, this is perfect for a beginner. Do it this method. There's a little bit of hand sewing involved in the end, but I like hand sewing. For me, I'd rather spend 10 minutes doing some hand sewing than having to try and finagle all these through my sewing it machine. It was really <laughs> hard work and I was scratching my head thinking, no. no, no, this is not the way to go. So once you've... Because I suppose as well what you could do is if you just did a tacking stitch, you could put another piece of fabric at the back. If you want I was to. actually going to say that, but I, I would actually sew mm. them, John, rather than... I know you would. Yes, I, you're a perfectionist. I, yes, and then, but then definitely, because you're always going to get that person that when you've nipped out the room, they're going to look at it to see how it's been made. <laughs> I am that person. <laughs> Purely because then I think I can make that when I go home, I but it. I am that love person. It. So once you've done that, prepare all the 25, and now we're ready to go. So... What we want to do... So this bit looks really complicated. No, this so is pay attention. so easy. Pay this attention. Very, very easy. <clears throat> See, one I prepared. I here. love yeah. it. Yes, that was from one of the squares. And that's, that isn't going to be on the blog because that is super easy. All you do is make one of the puffs as we're going to make and then you just put a bit of edging around it. But and if you pop dried walnuts in it, it keeps your pins um, oiled. You never did that, did you? See, I've learned something from you today, <laughs> haven't I? So the first thing we're going to do is attach the top square to the backing square. I do say in the instructions to line the corners up, mm -hmm. and that's fine if you do that. But a top <coughs> tip, and it's another one of those tips, if you come in a... Two strands. Mm, that's the one. And pop a pin, it will become very obvious why we're doing that in a moment. And you do that on all four corners. And I would put the pin in diagonally because it just makes it a little bit easier when you're sewing. The hardest bit is going to be the next bit, John, because it doesn't always behave. So I'm hoping it will behave. Of course it me. will. Come on, this is like a <clears> It's not We've only behave. dropped the cushions on the floor and filled the whole set with <laughs> that, wadding that today. That was my fault. I do apologise. Yes. Did you see that? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't we had see... a wadding mounted in here. Oh. I'm so excited. We got the three metre by three metre piece of wadding and we just no. covered the whole set. It's brilliant. I love but you get so much wadding in those bags. They're brilliant. Honestly, you do. They're really good. Much more than you ever need for the project. Now, this is the bit that will create the puff. Because the top is bigger than the bottom, yes. it won't fit unless we make it fit. And to do that, we grab hold of each end and we're just securing, that's all we're doing. And then we pull, we tug the top. Yes. Can you see that okay? Yep. And actually, can I see it? This is what I'm trying to do. I there we go. Um, oh, so you've got that little mark on the there where you've done with the quarter, with yes. the halfway mark on that's the That's why the little mark Ah. Um, and it's not going to play. But that makes complete things, sense so. as well. And by moving it down two or three strands, you're able to see the mark and line it up perfectly. I hadn't done it for that reason. So that is the second reason that you do. You bring your fabric in slightly, John. Now that's not the reason. Oh, but that, okay. that, so that no, I'm liking that. So we we just press the fabric down until we reach that centre point. And then this is the hardest bit because it doesn't always behave. You're going to push that fabric. 
Oh, I see what you're doing. Right, we're going to push that down. It isn't going to behave for me. And it doesn't always behave, so don't worry if yours doesn't. I mean, that's not the neatest, but that's the general look we're looking for. So what for. you're trying to do is you're trying to concertini it together, but keeping the th the, the curves together and then smush yes. it down completely because in the middle you, again. You can, I'm going to regret doing this because I've just got it <laughs> sitting. But if you were to do it one side or the other, that yes. would be so much easier. Yes. But I don't know if you're going to be able to see on the finished cushion if I bring it on. Not only does it make a really nice standy uppy puff, then these bits all match on yeah. the inside. Otherwise, you you're going to have to be sides. matching a lefty with a righty. You can see it on the sides here a lot clearer. I think that's a really, and it's much neater as well. And if you're spending all that time doing it, you might as well do it properly. Sorry. That's right. Um, <laughs> I, I just think it just makes it look more professional. And if you are going to be selling these, you want yours to be better than the person on the next stand and the next stand. So that's that's why we do that. So pull, I, I will try it again. It is not going to behave. Oh, no, it has today. And then we will pin this in place. But for this one, you need to pin it so you catch both sides of the pleat. Mm -hmm. But come back far enough. Right, yes, that you can still put the, the sewing machine through it. Because we want to keep those <coughs> in because... You can bet that if you take that out before you get to it, it's all going to pop out, and then it's quite hard to get it back in. So, oh no, oh, mm. so we pop it, lining up that mark, and then we put a pin in to form the pleat, and then we do that on all four sides. And if you do want to go down the much harder route of joining them first, you would leave a tiny section unstitched to stuff but I wouldn't advise especially if you are a beginner sewer this is much much easier and let's face it if something seems too hard we just won't bother doing it will we or if we start doing it and it doesn't look like we expect it to we'll just throw it we'll toss it to one side and then not get it out so we'll do that the same for all four pleats so that's how it should look Brilliant. once it's done I didn't choose the best color for you to see that oh you did so what we're going to do now is we're going to sew all the way round the outside. And you of that. don't need to leave a space open because you're going to stuff it. We're from going underneath. to stuff it from the back because we've <coughs> already cut the slit in the back to be Perfect. able to stuff. So I would advise this time to do a locking stitch. Now the locking stitches you see are reverse. Right, I'm just going button. to do back onto that, and yes. then I'm going to take it up. This time I would say to go up to a three. Oh, Four. that's a three point five. 3. A three point five. This is purely to keep this in place. But it's not going to be a seam, it's mm -hmm. just holding it's that like puff. like a basting stitch. It is, yes. Right. It's holding that puff so that it doesn't go anywhere. So take the first pin out, release that first pin. And I wouldn't worry about doing a reverse stitch. But what you do need to make sure is that you go within the quarter of an inch allowance. So I would say an eighth of an inch. So try and keep as close as you can to the edge, but make sure that you catch both pieces of fabric. Are you all right there, John? Are you having trouble I've, with the cushions? I'm trying to move the cushions because I'm <laughs> loving this, the rainbow one and I hadn't looked at it properly. <laughs> oh, I'm hearing that the teal is about to sell oh, out. Oh, that's my favourite. So at the moment, favorite. you can see the graphic for your rainbow cushion. If you have got the teal in your basket, please make sure you check out. We don't want you to miss out. But we are working with the teal at the moment, so we are very low on stock on the teal. But we have got the rainbow as well, and especially now, giving thanks to all the NHS and all that, this is a really beautiful project as well. And, and I've done what I always do, and I've made it, and if I were to do it again, which I will do, I would have done those two red. Oh, so right. So then at the bottom, those yeah, yeah, three, yeah. I would have had as violet, the violet colour. I know what you mean. So I, because the little red... But it's exactly the same technique, isn't it? You're just picking the different colours as you go. And Brilliant. you can, you, I, I heard you saying earlier, if you don't like all the colours of the rainbow and you've got a certain colour, exactly. just have orange and blue. Exactly. There, I think, I don't know how many of each colour there are. I can tell are. you now. Thank you. So you've now sewn down right, one Right, so I've inch. sewn to the edge and the reason I wanted to show you this is have your needle in the down position and lift your foot and turn it around. And it hasn't done it, it's, it's always the way when you want it to do something. Sometimes the material in the corner tries to disappear down into the machine itself. Right. So just give it a little pull just to release it. Um, it hasn't oh. done it this time, it must be the machine. It is, it's that's so exactly good. It's, it's stunning. amazing. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes it just gets caught and you don't want to start sewing because it would try to disappear down in the middle of the, down the machine. Then we go to the other end, remove the corner pins as you go but you don't have to remove the centre pins. And I'm doing exactly the same, needle in the down position and turning it. 
This is an incredible machine though, because it it's stunning. not doing it. My machine at home, it did it on every single corner and I was wanted to show <coughs> everyone. I have to say, I'm looking at this panel for the rainbow and they are beautiful colours. It looks like you're getting five of each colourway. Sometimes a bit oh, more. Oh, that's, that's perfect then because the... exactly, you could then do the stripes. Yes, because the centre one has deep, five. You've got this deep purple, you've got this beautiful, I'm going to call it mulberry. You've got this lovely red. Oh, it's beautiful. There, that means that you will be able to choose any colour where you want because yeah. the centre has five. And if there's five of one colour, exactly. then you can do uh, five one. Five across the middle and then four, four, three, three, two, two. So we've sewn all the way around the outside <coughs> and that's... That's how you've created the puff. That is it, John. That's it? That's the puff. That's cheating. That looks far too easy. I told you it was going to be That's easy. That's brilliant. That is the puff. And then we've got the slit in the back uh -huh. to be able to stuff our puff. And this is why... <laughs> this is why so I'll leave you to stuff your puff. <laughs> you can stuff your puff if you <laughs> no, want. you can That's do okay. that. <laughs> Current guidelines and all that. Oh, of course, yes, social distancing. <laughs> um, you've made me blush. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have this ability, I apologise. Um, you've done it again, you've completely... Uh, only you, could uh, it's only so you, sorry. John. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Right, so now I've, I've... Yeah, so now I've created my puff. Yes. I don't want to stuff it yet, because if I did, then it's going to be really hard yes. to sew. So I'm now going to join it to my next puff. Right. And this is where it's important that unless you're doing random, this is where if you've got them all laid out, you want to be sewing row by row. Okay. So you sew a whole row of five, yes. and then the next row, and you keep sewing. Now this is, remember... You're doing a two by two. I'm doing a two by two. Oh, no, 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 this is, yes. <coughs> this you're is, doing a little two by two for I, your I haven't got to that bit yet. No, that's right. You're rushing me, John. Sorry. Um, yeah, so we want to sew the rows, mm -hmm. and then we sew the rows. Sewing the rows that way. Yes, I'm with you now. <laughs> I was going to say, you're being spoken to, aren't you? How am I getting told off, John? No, you're not. Not at all. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, we're going to put them together. And do you remember me saying that the reason we come in, which is not the reason, which is now going to be my second reason that we can see the dot, to yes. even think about that, is that because these are all exactly the same size, then when we put them together, they're going to match exactly. Whereas oh, if you'd have allowed some of the material to go to over flip slightly... Over, it would be a different size ever so slightly, even by one or two threads. What a clever and idea. And if you were to do that on every single one of your puffs, just be two yeah. or three mils out, when you come to the end of it, it's not going to fit. No. Whereas by making sure that we were within that, then when we put it together That's and sew perfect. it... And I, I don't have to... I don't like pinning at the best of times, but I don't have to pin because no. it is exact. And then all we do is just take, it doesn't even matter what way the slits are, you can have the slits the same way if you want to because they're not going to be seen anyway. No. If your fabric was directional, then you would change it around to be directional, but this one isn't, so they're directional. None of this is directional, it's, it's well, apart <coughs> from the coloured ones. Some of the zigzags, yes. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if you have them, or unless the you want some of them. I didn't even think about that. You, I have done random there then because I didn't even do my directions. Well done, you tried yeah, something I'm, different. I'm getting there. So I put the two together. Perfect. And now I do so a uh, quarter of an inch quarter seam an inch, yeah. and I want to take it back down to what I would say a, a seam width so that would be 2.4 2. Uh, yeah I don't have that I, I, I do a 2.5 so I wouldn't go anything less than a 2.5 because you've got quite a lot of fabric you don't want it to bunch up no. the longer the stitch the easier the fabric will glide but if you do too long then it's going to have gaps gonna hold it. so we just do and, and I would do which I haven't done I would do a locking stitch or a reverse stitch at the front and the back yeah. or each end <clears throat> So I can officially say the teal has now sold no. out. No, that's great. It just shows great. We'll try and get them back in. That'd be brilliant. We just keep checking the website in case they, we can get more stock in for those. But the teal has sold out now. We've got the rainbow one left as well. Equally as beautiful. Um, that would be amazing for a children's room. I think it's gorgeous. I love it's the really colours on good. that. And, and I don't know if the telly can pick it up as well, but when you, when you see it in the flesh, all the different patterns to, uh, from a distance, and when I see it on the screen now, it just looks like it's red, orange, yellow. Mm, it's but, not. Each one of our patterns are completely individual. Right, I've sewn two together <coughs> now, and I'm not so sure, John, I've got that set on the right, because that's a very narrow... That's exactly a quarter I think inch. you might have fibbed to me, you No, know? it's not. It says quarter inch on the side. Are you sure? Oh. See, it says they're quarter. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay then, you might want to do a little bit more than a quarter. <laughs> so I would sew um, iron all the We might the call it a scant quarter inch. But oh. you've got to just be consistent with it, aren't you? Well, I've been so consistent that now I've now got my eighth of an inch showing, but that's fine. 
But that's what, get to know your machine. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it, you've it, known that machine for the sum total yeah. of about 14 minutes. I so love it, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't yeah. known it long. So, yeah, I didn't go in um, close enough to the edge on that. <laughs> and you're lining it up to the edge of the foot? Yes. It's very tiddly, but that that's fine. That's fine. Um, but again, get to know your machine because everyone's going to have a different machine. And if you do a bigger, it doesn't matter. As if long as it's the as same. As long as every single through. one is all the same. So but even with that, you're not going to see that once you've stuffed them. You won't. That's, no. that's, it, it is quite good that you can't see it. So I've done, I've done that and then iron the seam open. Oh, you press your seams open for that as well? I do. Perfect. Yes, press. Sorry. Yes. And then I would do all five in the row. Mm -hmm. And then I, once you've done that... I'll just go downstairs, hold on a moment, I'm back. Right. Is, so these are five in a row, aren't they, John? Yes, they are, yeah. yes. You can all so, see that's five, five beautiful <laughs> coloured rainbows all yeah. in a row there. So you would, yes, you would normally have um, five in a row. Or actually, the thing is, if you don't want to have five, if you want to make it, you've got a smaller cushion, mm. you'll have 15 left over. Exactly. So you could do a four by four. You could do a six by six, make it even bigger. Could do. But you could do a four by four with the remnants and all you would need is one of the coloured mm. to make the middle puff. I did think in the middle you could have put this yellow in the middle or the teal in the middle as oh, well. I could have done, couldn't I? But then it would have ruined my rainbow effect. I know. And I'm just thinking you can actually put a squeaker in the middle. And exactly. like a little mountain. Sorry, I'm getting lost again. But that's the great thing with these is you can make each one of them your own. But they're brilliant. Yeah. I wonder as well whether these would work for... Um, Fiddle quilts and fiddle things as well, because I think putting things in it to make it... Um, That's tactile. actually why why I thought that this you know um, would be made, because it, it's very tactile mm. and you can give it a good squeeze. It's a very good... It's like a hug. Hugging a it cushion, is. isn't it? Oh, we've had a message in from Jenny. Hug. Morning, Jenny. She's saying, wouldn't this be great as a, t as a technique for a textured wall hanging? <gasps> what a clever amazing. idea. Jenny, we love these ideas. Thank you so much. What a great idea. And as it's a textured wall hanging and it's out of people's fingers, you could probably put embellishments on oh. it. Because I wouldn't put, for, for children, no, no, no. safety conscious, yeah, I wouldn't yes, put any embellishments on. But if it was a wall hanging that was out of reach. Exactly. Oh, what a lovely way of that doing is, that. That is lovely. So... We've got our five in a row, uh -huh. and now we put, so that's the top row, and this is the second row. So we take the top row, and we lay it down over the second row, and then what you want to do, and you'll have five of these, is just join the first one, the seam of the first one up. Right. Because you will find that if you've done exactly the same, if you've got All your sack, your seam allowance consistency, All they the will through. just follow, and you're quite right that no one's going to look no. and, and notice that if you're a little bit off. So that's why I think this is a fantastic project for someone that's new. Exactly. Because we do get frustrating if it's if it doesn't look how we expect it to. But I think that you probably, be, if you mm. were to make one, it would look, even though you've never done this before, you would it would look like that. I'm, I'm very keen to make one of these. Oh, it's such fun. So I we, have to say, I, do enjoy, I really like that rainbow one because my studio is filled with colour and it's all these colours everywhere. And I'm just looking at it and thinking, my cushion, uh, my, my chair at the office is actually really comfy, but it would be really more comfy with one of those. Make one then, John. Because it's not the right, it's almost that wrong height because I've got arms on my chair. So if I could lower the chair and rotate but have the height, this is perfect. Yeah, that would be so amazing. I'm looking at this and I love this rainbow one. I think it's and, and um, I, I was talking to Vix last <coughs> time I was here that at home our house is completely white. Mm. All, so is every mine. room is white, so is which means then I can just change all the accessories yep. and have a new room each time. And that would be brilliant because you could just add that zing of colour. Yep. Be good for a conservatory as well. Just we've to... even got white carpets. Oh no, I haven't gone that far. Yep, <laughs> but we ridiculous. we have a dog, so we couldn't have a <laughs> no, white. We, we, couldn't we don't have, have, have a, a garden of us. I'd have a puppy in a heartbeat. <sighs> we do have slip slidey floors, which is not good because he goes no. skating every day. No. But we've got the office dog, Marge, is sometimes Ooh. in. Oh, she's adorable. Right, so how do I get it in the centre of this then, John, if I don't want? Um, so you see where it says... Got it, fine, sorry. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Excuse you, Luz. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to be that rude, actually. Absolutely So fine. now I'm going to do a bit bigger <clears throat> seam because I've yes. not done. So I'm going to sew down. Oh, that is a big one as well, So, but that's fine. That is a very... We are all very kind here. I promise you, no one is going to look at your seams. That is a I very big you. one, John. That's not even in the centre. That's fine. So I'm going to sew down there. I promise you, if you hadn't pointed it out, no one would have noticed. <laughs> and then do a reverse stitch at the end. Yep. And again, all we're doing that for is because then if you give it a tug, it's not okay. going to come undone. And then when you put the next 
That is really huge. Hi. Uh, That's rude, John. <laughs> I'm not going to get out of this today. <laughs> That's rude, that is. Oh, it's a big one, isn't it? But it oh, just goes to show, doesn't this it? This image of being called into front of the management today. You and me both, I'll be oh. in the queue behind you. <laughs> Oh, that is oh, a big no. one. That's fine. But it just goes to show it doesn't it does. matter if you have a big but one. But it because doesn't, because you can see you're now going to stuff it. No one's going to be able to tell. Exactly. And if they do have a look on... If well, the only thing they're going to be looking at is, is your middle working. And your okay. middle's perfect. So, it's sorted. Okay, that's fine. But it's, it is going to be a little bit off the other side. But that, that is absolutely fine. It's not going to matter for exactly. the... But if I'd have done the same... Yeah. That side, it wouldn't have mattered. So now we've got our five by five cushion. We're going to add the piping and the sides. How are we for time? Oh, I've done a bit better for time That's this all right. time. Sure. You've got about 17 minutes. So we're going to I should be... really wind you up and say you've got six minutes for the round. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> I should probably go into meltdown. <laughs> no, you don't. You're absolutely fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, I've done it again. So you've put me all of a dither, John. They won't let us work together again, will they? Well, it makes good telly, if nothing else. <laughs> right. That's fine. We're going to add the piping that's not really piping. Mm -hmm. So it looks like piping, but it isn't. And if you see on this one... Now, in quilting terms, we call that a flange. <laughs> we do. That's what it's called. It is. You put it on... That's before you put the I binding flange, on, that's what you call John. it. Well, in the quilting terms, you put that on before you do the binding. That's called a flange. So... <laughs> I'm going to drink some water. Um. <laughs> what did you have to say that for, John? Right. Um. <laughs> Back to your piping. Right, we, we, with the piping... I think, the... would you like the air cord back on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've just worn my hands up. Thank you, John. Right, so with the piping... You want the right sides of the fabric together. Now, you can't really tell the right side because it. Well, it's it looks white. Exactly. Cotton, yeah. So it's not going to matter. Again, mm -hmm. I'm thinking more like for the novice sewer if they're really worried that it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's your cushion. When it becomes into your hands, it's your cushion. So we're going to put. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the picture. Don't look at me, John, I'm please. I'm looking at the picture. <laughs> right sides together. Right, I think it's something really bad. Um, okay, I'll bring me down. Right, <coughs> there we go. <coughs> I've just realised. I've just realised one thing. One of those is going to be slightly shorter. What have you done? Have you cut no, it? No, your seam. Because your seam. Oh no, no. Ah, oh, right. The... So that's. I'm glad <coughs> you mentioned that, actually, John. Oh, excuse me. I'm glad you mentioned that because. My style of sewing is that I always give someone a little bit too much. Perfect. Because you make the nose run and everything. I'm well. thinking as well. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, if you give someone too much, then stop it. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm just listening <laughs> from Joe. I've your just eyes. heard management are watching. I'm oh like, my goodness. oh, okay, okay hello. Sorry. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Nothing to see here. It was John. <laughs> um, because. I always give people a little bit more than yes. they need, and that way, then you, you can always you can always cut a bit off, but you, you can't, can't add, add a bit on. So that's what I do. So you'll notice in the instructions, it tells they you to go are a bit a, they, yes, I've given you more, and also <coughs> it, it tells you to don't cut don't cut the back panel out until you've made the cushion, Perfect. because if you did what I did with my big one, then it's no, it would fit. It's if it's the other. Stop it, John. It's the other way, isn't it? It's the other way. Yes. If you make your cushion, if you make your seams too narrow, then you're going to have a wider piece. Yes, that's right. So if you do do bigger ones, it's not going to matter. So first thing we do is you line your piping up over. Oh, see, you can't see it now, John. It's all right. You can pull those faces at me again. It's fine now. And um, I'm not pulling. It. <laughs> and we want to. I'm just going to fan myself with the coast, you know. That's it. They're quite stiff. They're quite <coughs> nice, aren't they? So oh we're goodness. going to do a eighth of an inch seam down here because again it's just a tacking seam. We when we're going to. I'd move your needle if you're going to do an eighth of an inch. Well, no, yeah, that's a good idea actually. I was going to say what I'll do is so I'll just. With it, when it says zero point five, push that up to six point five. Cross. Oh. Okay. 
hold your finger down. I think it'll work. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. And that just pushed That's up to That's what I six, wanted before. Push to 6.5 now. If you want an eighth of, eighth of an inch, I think it'll be at 6.5. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, right. Fine. So that's now an eighth of an inch. Good job I've got you here, John, really. Well, I would have said that. I wouldn't have said that five minutes ago. I can't believe you did that to me. Right. So I'm going to sew an eighth of an, an inch down here. It's a good job they can't see you, John, at the moment, isn't it, what you're doing? Right. You realise this is going to be an outtake, don't you? And you do, you, you do realise we're never going to be able to work together again. Ah, oh, and the other thing you want to do is increase <clears throat> your stitch length. Because to again... 3.5 again. Uh, yes, Perfect. because it is just purely to hold it into place. Perfect. And sew down the side. Is that the right placement for the needle there? Okay. Uh, it's fine. I, I think the general idea, I think they will get the general idea. Of course. I don't think they're expecting much from us now, John, really. Just to finish it would be good. <laughs> be, be, be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> right, so I've sewn <coughs> my... That looks pretty close to an eighth of an inch. That's not bad, is it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim the ends off. Perfect. So I did, I mean, this was just to show you how to do it, but you won't have quite as much. So you centre your panel so you have each, um, the same amount each end. And you'll notice that what I've done with this one is I've done the same, I've done this step before I add this on. But with the big cushions, I've done the two sides. Yes. And then I did the... the top and the, the bottom. Yes, so that means that the piping goes further. If you can see, it goes yep. along top, but that's entirely up to you. In mm -hmm. the instructions, it says to do it this way, but you can do it. It's your cushion, you, you do like. it how you want. So then you would add... The others. So if you were doing it like this cushion, you do the two sides, yes, and then you'd add this on. Yep. If you're doing it the way of this little cushion, then you do all of these first, then you add the sides on. Are you with me? Yep. Oh, good. Because that's exactly what you would do for quilting as well. That you put the two borders on first, then the top and the bottom. Right. Brilliant. <clears throat> so I haven't cut these, so I'm going to just again. But this is nice because you can then rough cut those yes. into the size you want. Again, be... it's all I, I give you a little bit more than you need, so that. Um, excuse me. Yeah, give you a bit more than you need so that you can cut it off afterwards because we all sew differently. So I've done all my four uh -huh. and then I'm going to add, well no, I've done two if you're doing this, but four this way. Yep. And then you add your, um, what's the word, what am I looking for? Your side edging. So we do right sides together. Now I would you use... You put raw edge to raw edge. I would use the folded edge. Okay. I've tried it both ways. And when you do the raw edge to raw edge and fold it back, sometimes this puffs a bit. Right. Whereas oh, if that I, makes sense. Yeah, if I have it this way, and the reason we do it is we make a double, this is double material. Yes. You could do it single if you wanted to. Okay. If that's the case, just half the measurements width-wise, because I think it's by four inches, but just do two. But I like it because it gives a really firm cushion. I think it does, yeah. And especially when you do the back. And you've got loads of fabric left over at the end anyway, so yeah. use it. I would do that. So. It's again, it's entirely, if you've been sewing a long time, you want to do it another way, do it. But I would put, certainly if you're a beginner, I would put that that way. And then you just sew down there and you sew your... That's not nice. That's not, no. it's only a little one. If you put the... I think you're fibbing to me, John, so I should just do my own thing. Perfect. I should just... Yep, I should just do that one. I haven't gotten you into any trouble today at all, so you're fine. <laughs> I will so be behind you, you in the queue. Oh, what do, are we doing? Yeah. We're going to find a little pub somewhere that allows us to sit outside in the cold. Oh, lovely. Because when we actually got married 31 years ago, mm -hmm. it was one of the hottest days of the year. Oh, goodness me. And we were like sweltering. Well, when I came in this morning, it was one of the most beautiful sunrises I oh, have ever it? seen. It was absolutely exquisite. But I couldn't, um, I couldn't tell you now whether it's raining or snowing. It was a little bit overcast when I looked out okay. when I had my coffee. I've now... That's beautiful. And it's a really easy way to doing it. If you want to put piping in there, mm -hmm. you can. But I personally don't think it needs it. I don't think it. you need it at all. Because it's, it's just the look of it. I agree. And again, piping is easy once you can do it. But it's a little bit fiddly. Oh. So I, I would... If I can make something easy for someone, I will. Push this and I, sorry, iron it, press it back. You've got about 12 minutes left. Oh, no, that'd be fine. 
<coughs> another one, but yes. So we, what we do now is we would cut off the end. And when you're cutting, always cut away from you. Don't be tempted to try because no, no, you want to get a nice away. straight line. So we would, if you have to turn the fabric over, turn exactly. the fabric over and then cut straight. What I would do is I would probably use my rotor cutter and do it square. Definitely, well. because that looks As a I little saw bit... As I you were doing that, I thought, oh, no, I'd be It looks a bit cutter. wonky. That's but, right. So we would do that on all... All four sides. Yeah. Well, so, you have done them on all four sides, I can tell. I'm using my imagination. Use, but and I, you have six minutes left. So again, <laughs> if, if I was doing, if I was doing <clears> how the pattern says, you would do... Opposite th sides. You would do this, the whole of this step first, and then you would add that on to these sides um, and then put that on <coughs> after. But we're not going to have time to do all that. So I just want to show you how to make the envelope back because Perfect. I know a lot of people... Can you stuff... So all you do now is you just stuff those once you've done the ooh, borders. Oh, would you like me to stuff a puff? Please. Right. So all you do, and again, this is not the random in me. This, it's a 250 gram bag. You do not. I know exactly what you're about to tell me. How big is your scale? <laughs> you weigh it out, don't no, you? No, 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 it says on it. Yes. Oh, yes, sorry, yes. But yes. you weigh each one out, don't yeah. you? And get 10 grams for each one. Yeah. Perfect. But, but they're consistent. And I think that's actually a really good idea because you get a very effective... Well, if you feel it, it's a nice firm um, puff, oh, isn't it? As it is. Whereas and I, they're equal. I did try with six grams, but it was a bit wishy-washy. Mm. So I just thought, no, we'll have 10 grams. But I'd, I've made both of them. Stop it, John. <laughs> I'm saying it. <laughs> Your nothing. eyes are saying a thousand <laughs> things to me. The the um the first cushion. <laughs> you and your ten gram puffs. Honestly, I, <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I, I weighed them I would all do out exactly the same. Because then you're going to get but again. It's consistent. That's the one. It's the consistency. It's the neatest that each thing. One of them is you and go. if you, I, you know, I can't stress if you are selling things and you want to sell them on, people will pick holes or try and pick holes, and they won't be able to because you'll no. have done it perfect. All your puffs will be the same. One of the packs I had enough to make the pincushion out of. Mm. The other, I had just enough to make the puffs. Fine. So, it, it, although it says 250 grams, it's not... But they vary. Yeah, they do. It's always by So, too. I'm just going downstairs to weigh out my 10 grams. Yep, so I've got my 10 grams. Perfect. Okay, and I'm then... I'm so glad you did that. I had a horrible image of you bringing a scale. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't sell those. I never thought of that. <laughs> I think we've giggled enough today. Right, right. so we just... So we just stuff our puff mm -hmm. and try and... Sorry, I've, I've, I would teach you the correct way. If you stuff a little at a time, you won't put much pressure on, right. on here. If you try and ram it all in at once, you're going to stretch that and put it out of place. I saw my eyes looking then, John. So I'm just stuffing it in there. It's all gone quiet. That's I, the quietest I physically you've been. cannot That's say a word. That's the quietest you've been all day, John. <laughs> Right, so I've stuffed my puff with my 10 grams, but again, if you don't want it so firm, yeah, you don't yeah. have to have it. And then all I would do is I would just, it doesn't have to be pretty. Well, because no one's going to see it yeah. again. So I would over sew. And then if you really want to, before you put the back on, you could put a panel, panel a plain, uh, just, I wouldn't even use good fabric. I would just use lining material. If you've got any of that, just use a really mm. thin material just to cover the puffs up. So once you've done that, we're going to put our back on. Now, I've made the back in two different colours, just so that you can see how it works. Perfect. And the what, pattern, you obviously recommend doing the same colour. The same colour in the pattern, yeah. <coughs> but I've obviously done, you're just trying to explain to I mean, you can. I think there probably would be enough of the white of to do half, but I, I just wanted people, because sometimes they, they can't quite see. So I'm going to have to understuff my puff now, John. Um, they can't quite see how um, it should look. You've got about three and a half that's minutes cool. that's, left. That's fine. So we've got our whole square. Yes. And then what we would do, we would take our top, and it's it's all explained mm -hmm. in there, but the top is folded over so both of these are the right side. Right. So it doesn't matter what you do use, but you do want to have A double the raw edge up against right. one of the tops. And you'll see, if I'd have done this properly, you'll see it comes, well, you can, it comes halfway yep. um, down. And that's the back. Now you need to put the back on the, the, the smaller one first. Yes. Because if you see here, the back flaps down. Mm -hmm. You don't really want it that way up. No. Because, because it goes all baggy. Yeah. yeah. So you want it that way. So put your the smaller one on first. And then again, it's double sided. So they're both the right side of fabric. And then you would lay the, the back, the, the bottom of the back 
down like that. Uh -huh. So if I turn it over, you get the idea because that would yes. all that would have sides. The the side. And then you would sew all the way around here, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. You don't you don't leave any gaps because you've got You're the turn gap. You from the fold. That's it. And then you <clears> would just I would trim off the corners, yes. but again, don't pinch your yep. don't cut your uh, stitches. And then personally, I like I love an overlocker. So if you've got an overlocker, just overlock. Perfect. But I wouldn't stuff the puffs until you've actually yes. done that. So then and then when you do stuff the puff, yeah. So complete the the back first, then stuff the puffs, mm -hmm. but then turn it the right way in. Out. Yep. Before you finish sewing the backs of the puffs off, because to check it's worked. To to check because you might put six in there and then find that you it's don't. But enough. then you'll have to weigh out yeah, another yeah. four grams for each, which I wouldn't do. So, but ten works perfect. Perfect. Brilliant. And then if you did want to attach a <clears throat> a lining piece on the back, you would then just hand tack that onto the back once you've stuffed everything. Well, you're not listening to me, John. I've just done that bit. Oh no, because you haven't stuffed them before you sew oh, them Oh yeah, together. that's right. You, good job you're here today, isn't it? I knew there was a reason you turned up for work this morning. <laughs> yes, forget what I said. Don't put that on until you've made it. Make the whole cushion first. Yes, you're then, right. Because then you put yes. the panel in afterwards, otherwise but, you couldn't stuff. Yeah, I would hand stitch it, <clears> unless you, you're very good at squashing all the puffs. Well, no, no, you no, should you be all right, because be. you've got, but you've got it the... It just makes no sense, because on the inside, no one's going to see it. and if. Unless is. you're me and have a look to see if they've done you're welcome that. Welcome to. And you can criticise But it is it such a good job it's you're a... here. Because <laughs> they would have all been messaging Just me checking. saying they'd done it all wrong. But yes. Make your make your yeah. cushion first. But you don't need to put the panel on because you just hand tack those in. And the thing is, is what personally I wouldn't because no. I could use that material for something else. Because I'm just learning embroidery at the moment, trying to. It's a good way to practice your embroidery stitches because if they're ugly, no one's going to see them. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. I've just I've just started felting. Oh, felting is a dark art. Oh, did you? No, I've got really Delphine's good. Delphine's poppies. Now, is there anything else in the pattern that isn't there that you might want to give us a little tip on? That you think might have just been take your time and as with anything and it doesn't matter whose pattern it is read the whole pattern first if you think you know what you're doing just read it because there may be something that you needed to do especially like the piping yes because you needed to con with the pattern you need to complete two sides before you put the rest of them on it's not a disaster because all you'll get is that finish mm -hmm. rather than that finish so and yeah just read beautiful. the pattern read the pattern first Thank and have you. fun exactly. sewing is fun Thank you so much. Oh, it's, it's been, been a an ball. absolute delight having uh, with I, you. Yeah, I will see you upstairs. Indeed. And yes, in front of Neil's office. In front of the office, things. yes. We'll just recap exactly what you're getting today. We've, we've sold out of the teal. Oh, so we're going to do a very quick video on how to buy with us. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. How fabulous was that? Such a great demonstration. I haven't giggled so much in my job ever. That was brilliant. Hope you enjoyed that with us. Just to remind you what you're getting, we've got this wonderful rainbow cushion left. The teal sold out, unfortunately. Keep checking the website. We might be able to get some more in. So we've got this wonderful teal, this wonderful rainbow cushion. You're getting a whole big bag of stuffing. You're getting the wonderful set of instructions with it. You're getting a meter of the yellow fabric meter of the yellow, you're getting a half meter of the white, getting a half meter of the white, and then you're also getting, just making sure that that doesn't fall over, you're getting this wonderful set of squares, exclusive to Sewing Street, there are 40 different squares, 40 different fabrics in here, and you can tell just by looking at them there, each one of these has got a different um, motif on it, they're all different, they're all completely unique, some are duplicated, but they're all beautiful, beautiful designs, 
in the way that they do it. You can tell all these gorgeous, gorgeous colors on this as well. You're only using 25 squares for this cushion, so you'll be left over with 15 of them left over. And you can tell we've got loads of different projects in our teal uh, range that we had left over. Beautiful lavender bags, wonderful little um, purses, gorgeous little coasters. And if you're using two of them together, you make a beautiful little pencil case as well. So you've got loads of different options in what to do with the leftover squares, which I love the fact you've got leftovers and great products to be able to make out of those as well. And this colorway is so fabulous, a gorgeous rainbow way of doing this. And you can do them completely random. You can do them with order. There are so many ways that you can do this. There are 40 different squares to choose from to use for your project. Half a meter of the white, meter of the gold, the gorgeous instructions, which are really well laid out, loads of photographs as well and 250 grams of your toy stuffing as well so really lovely project there please make sure that if you did, did miss our demonstration catch it up back on YouTube later today and we'll be back in a few minutes hello my name is Sally Stevens I'm from Worcestershire a little town called Upton upon Severn which is a lovely little riverside town and not far from there I also have a little sewing studio so I can work and leave all my mess left out um, when I'm preparing projects and quilts and so on. My speciality is in fact quilting, patchwork and quilting, and I probably started that when I was about 14 years ago. So as I often joke, that was only seven years ago. In fact, it was rather a lot longer, but I've always enjoyed crafting and patchwork really hooked me and I love it. So now then, what can I tell you? Some Something you may not realise about me is that although lots of you have seen me many, many times on, um, on sewing TV and classes, because I, I teach as well, um, I also do a lot of unpicking. So don't be afraid ever. If you have to unpick things, so do we. It's not a problem. We all have to start somewhere. And sometimes you get a bit cocky and think, oh, I can just do that without pinning or without this. And then you think, ah, should have paid attention to my own words. So some sewing tips for you. That's one. Keep a, a seam ripper handy. That will always be your friend. And um, another one that I think is very important, whether you're a, a beginner or more experienced, when you're sewing something, particularly for the first time, a new technique, slow down. There's no rush. It's not a race. Have a little practice with spare fabrics if you've got them before you use your best fabric that you've just purchased so that you get your techniques just right but also slow down take your time watch what you're doing think about what you're doing and read the instructions that's always very useful so what can I say I've been asked to say what my claim to fame might be and I would have to say in all honesty being on sewing street Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good. It's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside. And it's about the life you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello everyone my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire 
then went down to Hampshire, and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those, I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance, and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles, so embroidery, cross-stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new, and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it, and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you.
So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. Welcome back. I am beyond excited about this hour because it is literally an hour of my quilts and my designs. I am so excited. The f we've got just so many, I don't know where to start. So we're going to start off by just explaining what we're doing today. We have had, obviously, in this climate that we're in at the moment, stock coming in is a little bit difficult. So kits and things haven't been able to be done as much as we'd have liked. So we decided to do an hour where we can do as a one-off. People have been asking for the instructions on their own. So we're going to do it as a one-off, see how it goes, and that will be that. And we'll call it the end. The, we're going to do the, um, all the quilts that I've done on the shows, going back to when I started back in March, all the individual quilts, um, some will be kits, some will be instructions on their own, some will be bundled instructions, so it's going to be a very different hour, it's something we're going to do now today. The first one we're going to start off with is our Sun Print Quilt Bundle, which is this absolutely glorious, I love these. These are the Alison Glass fabrics that we had, the Sun Prints. So you're getting a huge um, amount of fabric here, it's six and a half meters in total. You're getting a half a meter of this glorious pink. Getting, uh, is it a half meter of these? So this one's called Stitch Penny, it's half a meter. This one is the blue, we're getting a meter of the blue, which is called Hydrangea. Then a meter and a half of this green, isn't it stunning, I love that. And then you're getting this glorious white, as ivory, not white, ivory. You're getting three meters of the ivory. So you're getting three meters of the ivory, a meter and a half of the green, a metre of the blue, half a metre of the orange, and a half a metre of the pink, as well as the instructions to be able to make that glorious quilt there. And that is all coming in at $78.99. But for the very first time ever, not repeating this one, is the instructions on their own. These are available for $9.99 limited stock, so they're only available today, $9.99. Double check the website and get that in. That's available there with that code, $9.99 on that. So let me show you what the quilt looks like. We did it in two different colorways. Um, the first colorway was the color that you've just seen. So this is the color you're going to make it out of, and you can see it really flows beautifully really really works very very well there so that's the first colorway um, and then the second colorway which i'm going to do my little mini demonstration in is this glorious gray and teals 
purples and yellows. So unfortunately, this is what we mean that the stock, this colorway has sold out, which is why we've been able to bring you the patterns on their own today, because obviously stock, we can't get the stock in at the minute, so that's why we thought we'd offer these. So what I was going to quickly just show you, there are a few little techniques that I think most people need to do when they do this quilt. So the very first one is whatever colours you decide to use, make sure you put a little tack of the fabric you're using against what colour it is called in the pattern. That makes your life a lot easier. When you're making each of these blocks, each one has a different way of doing it. Um, we have done this before on a show. Um, can't remember the date on that one. But what we'll do is you can still so we'll get the date for you. The great thing is our YouTube page, you'll be able to get that very, very easily. And it's there for forever. You're not going to, you can always refer back to it when you do go back and refer to it. And the great thing with this is that it's, there's one little key tip that I want to just show everybody. This is what the quilt looks like, the block looks like when it's finished. But what is very, very important is making sure that you get these the correct way round, because what it does is it creates a secondary pattern. Uh, that was done on the 30th of May, so you can refer back to that on the 30th of May. Now what we're doing here is you'll tell in this quilt that we've made, you can see that you've got these dark squares going all the way through the quilt. And as you progress down the quilt, it carries on and it creates that secondary pattern. So what's very, very important is when you make this quilt, choose a dominant color for here and making sure that it really stands out from the way that you do the quilt. I think that's really, really important to be able to have that. We've never instru offered the instructions before, which is why I'm giving you a little bit of tip. Um, and we're not likely to do it again in the future, I'm hearing. So we just wanted to make sure that you had the ideas when you're picking your colours, make sure you pick a really dominant colour. And when you do it, put two strip sets together and just cut your pieces out to be able to do it that way. It just makes your life that little bit easier. But again, that was on the 30th of May was my demonstration on that. So you'll easily be able to go back and see all the different demonstrations um, and ideas of my tips and things on being able to do those blocks. But make sure the color choosing, choose a dominant color for that one. It works very, very well with that dominant color. And then next we've got our ovals quilt. Now this one, So this one is, you're going to need the um, always, it's called the always, always oval ruler, I think it's called. But this is the quilt that you'll be able to make with it. We're offering the instructions on their own today, but you can tell it just makes this really, really modern, very, very fun quilt, doing something totally different. And what is so great is the ruler is so lovely to use really really love this so these are just for the instructions that we're doing now so the instructions are over here and that gives you all the details on how to make this quilt really really great pictures loads of pictures on it and you'll see on each one of them it just shows you how to put it all together what you're doing and the simplest way of doing that and this is important to be used in conjunction with this ruler now this is the um, all, all, bleh, Oval All Ways ruler. Again, Creative Grids have surpassed themselves making this fabulous ruler. Hmm? Now you don't have to make the, use this ruler for this quilt, but it certainly helps. It does make your life a lot easier. It's a fabulous ruler. Um, and it's a really simple way of being able to use this ruler to create something very, very special. Um, we did this quilt, right, I think it was in March, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll show you just how simple it is to use this ruler. So there are many ways you can do it. If you just wanted to create a complete oval, you're going to fold your fabric into four. So I'm gonna fold my fabric into four. And then this bit of fabric here, you're going to line up on the ruler here. You'll see there's an A-line. You line the fabric up with that A-line. And you can see you've got that marking along there and a marking along there. You're just making sure that you follow that line all the way through. I prefer to use a 28mm rotary cutter blade 
just because I think it just gives you that easier swerve as you go through. This was done on the, what date, 20? 23rd of March. So if you want to see how I made this quilt and the demo for that, check out the 23rd of March and you'll be able to see it there. But what I love is now I've just cut that at four, but if I then go to five and a half, and I cut that at five and a half, then I pull this off. Oh, I didn't press hard enough. But this will happen to all of you, and what's so great about this ruler, as long as you line it back up exactly where you had it before, which I have done, you just then... push there. And there we go. Oh, goodness. I think that blade needs changing. And it's only a few strands you can see as you go. That's the importance of changing your rotary cutter blades as you go along. It really makes your life a lot easier. But the ruler is so good, all you do now is you line it up to that exact point again, which I've just done, and then you can just go through and cut those. Along there. I'm not winning with this blade today, am I? helps if your rotary cutter is sharp, so I'm going to do that in a different blade. So you can see you've now created this beautiful Liberty Oval. So you can tell this quilt would work really, really well with any fabric you want to choose. Um, I'm going to do a half one now. So I do that. So if I just wanted to create another oval over here, I think that's gone through now, hopefully. There we go. So you can see then, when you're doing it, you can then create a different, you've got an Easter egg there, if you like, an Easter egg basket or a basket of things. So this ruler is really, really user-friendly. User you can do it in so many different techniques and designs. And what I love about the Creative Grids rulers, all of them come with this fabulous set of instructions on how to be able to do this. It's a wonderful, wonderful set. Also then teaches you how to actually go and sew curves, which most of us struggle with as well. And you can show you how you can do four different ways of doing it as well. It's a really, really fantastic ruler this. So do check out that demonstration that I did on the 23rd of March. 23rd of March. So check that out. It's a really great demo. So that's the ruler. So you do, you don't have to have the ruler, but it does make your life a little bit easier as well. We've also got the, the uh, around the oval quilt instructions that it comes on their own, not with the ruler. And um, those are available today for $9.99. So next we're going to do the bundle of um, Bargello instructions. You're getting four different sets of instructions for four different quilts. Um, these are what? Oh, so we are limited on this because what we've done is you're getting four different, um, four different patterns. Um, but you're only being charged for three of them. So you're getting the Angie Bargello there. You're getting the B Bargello, you're getting the Charlie Bargello, and you're getting the Diva Bargello. You're getting all four of these instructions today, saving $9.99 getting all four of them, and we're doing that at £20, £29.96. Let me show you what each one of these look like. Now, each one of these give you really fabulous um, details of exactly how it is you go about it and you've got the code at the back to be able to make them. So the bundle works really, really well because the 
the, uh, the bundle works really, really well because you can then change, you can see how they change ever so slightly as you go along because each design is so different. But the technique to start and get you there is all the same. So it's exactly the same technique to get to the point of just being able to sew them all together. And you can just tell they're so vibrant. So what we'll do is I'll just show you these hopefully in order. Um, I'm hoping this is the Angie Bargello that I'm going to show you now. Now these instructions are also available on their own. Um, you can get them on their own as well. So this is the Angie Bargello, hopefully, because I did them all in the same color, the same backing, the same stitching, but obviously then you can't find them when you need them. That is not the Angie Bargello, which one's that? I think what's happened is one of our patterns has the wrong picture on. I think this is the B Bargello. This is the B Bargello here, so you can tell that's going to be the B. And you can see it's an exactly symmetrical quilt, being able to do exactly the same design, um, doing it differently. So that is demoed on the 3rd of April, that one. Oh, sorry, I've just lost my always. Then this one, I think, is my Angie Bargello. Now this one was demoed on the 7th of, of March, uh, so you'll be able to go back there and look at that. But you can see these are really substantial size quilts, they're really great. So you can see the detailing on it and the movement in the fabric is so fabulous. This was demonstrated on the 7th of March. I'm losing my demo pieces over here. That was on the 7th of March. That's the Angie Bargello. So the instructions for that today are available for today only uh, for $9.99. Uh, then we've got our Charlie um, Bargello today. The instructions to make this are also available today only for $9.99. you can tell each of these is so different. So if you are interested in trying a Bargello, what's so great about these is the design is so different and the outcome is so different. For each one of these, if you did get the bundle, you've got the option of being able to play and play around with them and see what works best for you. So that was the Charlie bundle. And that's the bundle you get, the, the pattern instructions that you're getting there, the Charlie. And again, you've got a wonderful set of grid on the back on how to do it. Loads of photographs on the inside on how best to do your fabrics. And then last but not least, we've got our Diva Bargello. So that's what this one looks like here. This is the Diva Bargello with the set there. $9.99 for the quilt instructions today. And this is the finished quilt. As you can tell, they're a little large. Oops. Getting there slowly. So again, this is another symmetrical one. And it's very interesting because I've taught a lot of these as classes um, and so many people have different favorites. B is the favorite usually, but otherwise it's the, the diva one, which is great. So we've got the bundle there. So that was the diva one I've just shown you. So you've got a bundle of all four of these together. The diva bundle, the diva Bargello. Got the diva, you've got the Charlie. You've got the B and you've got the Angie and the photo in the B one is wrong, so that'll be corrected. So you're getting all four of those today as a bundle and that's going to be £29.96 for all four of those. You're effectively getting one for free because they're not three uh, not $9.99 each. So you'll be saving $9.99 being able to get all four of those together as a bundle. So next we've got our applique quilt 
we've got two bundles, which I adore these. So let me show you what these look like. So the, the kit for this one, luckily we've been able to get a bit more of this. We've got two different colours. Let me show you the blue one first. So this is the blue quilt, the blue applique. And it's something different. Nice being able to play with a bit of applique and try something new. So that quilt as well, not very big, 42 inches. You're going to get the wonderful set of instructions as well as you're getting how much of the blue do we know? So you're getting a metre and a half of the denim cotton mixer. Getting a metre of the tangerine, a metre of the cream, and half a metre of the misty blue. So those are the four colours you need to make this quilt. So all of those, it's four metres of fabric and the instructions for £39.99. And the demonstration we did for this was last Saturday, I think. Or last, last Sunday. We'll get the date on that in a minute. Uh, but that was the blue colourway there for the applique quilt. We've also got one in the pink, which is also beautiful. Let me show you what the finished product looks like. And they look so different. And the great way with doing this is that I use Bonderweb in the middle. I think there's Bonderweb in that as well, isn't there? No, Bonderweb was on its own. My bad, sorry. So that is the instructions there for the, the uh, quilt there for the in the pink. So you're going to get a half a metre of the misty blue. You're getting a metre of the cream a metre and a half of the... Getting a metre of the tangerine and a metre and a half of the pink, so that's four metres in total. And the instructions there for £39.99, huge amounts of fabric. Now we are also doing the instructions on their own, so you can be able to get those without any fabric, and that would be £9.99 being able to do that. The date we did that demo was the 5th of July, did you say? 5th of July. So if you want to be able to go through and see that, 5th of July is your date, pop onto our YouTube. So with these instructions, they're slightly different because not only are you getting the wonderful set of instructions with the details of how to put it all together, how to do FPP, um, and the borders and how you're putting all the borders, you're also getting a summary of instructions, uh, of templates on how to do all your templates, which works so beautifully. A hugely comprehensive um, set of templates here to be able to make that central section. So it's a really lovely pattern, this. And we've been able to bring it to you today only for $9.99. Now the next quilt that we've got is the Starry Night uh, quilt, which is this wonderful one behind me here. You can see I've used the pastel uh, barley pops there, which I think are absolutely gorgeous. But we've also got it in autumn and rainbow. So I've used the uh, rainbow colorway here. So you can tell this is the colorway I've used here. They're beautiful, beautiful colors. And with that gray background, it just pops so beautifully there. So you not only are you getting the instructions and your barley pop, you're also getting three meters of your gray and all of that for the price of £69.99. It's a huge quilt and really a lovely, lovely quilt. It's one of those ones that just you've got to take your time with and just really enjoy it. It was absolutely stunning to be able to do this quilt. I love doing that. And that one's there, $69.99. So that's the first colorway that we've got. We've also got a second colorway for you, which is this gorgeous autumn colorway here with these beautiful, beautiful barley pops there. So again, we've got the set of instructions, the barley pop, and three meters of this fabric here. And that's going to be $69.99. What date did we do this one on? 4th of July. So if you check out the 4th of July, you'll be able to see a very comprehensive demo of how it is that I've made this. But, I... but this is the first time we've ever been able to bring instructions on their own to yourselves. Uh, we just wanted to try something and do it and be able to go there. So we've got the Starry Night instructions today as well on their own for $9.99. And I've got a very short demo to be able to show you how we're doing this. 
And what I loved is because you're not restricted with the background of colors that you do. So what you're doing is you're going to make eight of these and eight of these. And then you can see that that, um, two seconds, there we go, that slots into your quilt there. So what's really, really important is that when you do this, you just take your time. It is meant to be fun and you will enjoy it. Um, when you do do it, what is important, the main thing is the beginning uh, diamond that you've got over here needs to be a solid dark color. And the reason you want that to be a nice dark color is when in the center of the square of the, the quilt here, you can see I've created this beautiful orange star in the middle. Now what the joy of this barley pop is that you're actually able to, because you've got two of each barley pop strip, you're able to create this wonderful symmetrical design using the same um, coordination of colors. So you'll see, you'll put these strips together and when you sew your strips together, you're going to have them in, th in all these different colorways and you'll choose how you want to sew them all together. And you'll see these will be your strip sets when you do them. And then once you've got them, you'll have them in a strip set like that. And obviously the pattern will explain to you how to cut those. And then once you're ready to do it, you then just slide off. Now remember, just check the pattern for what the width of this is. You'll be able to see on the pattern very, very comfortably. And you just cut off your strip sets that you need for this. And you'll get a series of them in different colorways there. And you can see there that you can just mix and match them as you like. And once you've got them, I'm now gonna just show you, because we've unfortunately sold out the blue one. But what I wanted to show you What I just wanted to show you was when you do do this, you're going to be creating four diamonds. So if you can imagine, in fact, I'm going to do these patterns that come in very handy today. That is a diamond there. And that is a diamond. So you can see there's one diamond. And if I move that over there and that over there, there's a second diamond. And if I do that there, is your third diamond. And if I slide this over here, that's four diamonds. So each one of these, I'm going to call them a prong. Each one of these prongs is made up of four different sets of diamonds. And each one of these, because I don't want people to be overwhelmed with it, because the great thing is the most mindful thing about this is sewing all your strip sets together, which I absolutely loved. And then when you do, you've got all your strips ready to go. You then just pick the different colorways on how you like this to go. And you can then rotate them. You can put different colorways in. And that's when these come in, that once you cut them and you've put them into the strip sets, you can then choose how you want them all to go together. The only thing I would always remind you is this one and this one to be a dark and a light. Because once you've made them, you might want to have a light star or you want to have a dark star. And you'll only know that once you lay them all out, ready to go. And that is just such a nice, nice project to be able to do it. And if you didn't want to get the kit today, we've also got the instructions available for 9 dollars Today only, being able to offer the instructions on their own. And that is just such a nice way to do. Oh, I'm hearing these are the most popular on their own today so far. But what's great about this is virtually any jelly roll would work with this because you can do a completely random star. You don't have to do them as a uniform one. You don't have to use barley pops. They were beautiful to work with and they were really lovely to do. But we have you, this works with any single jelly roll or any two and a half inch strips that you wanted to use. Really great. And the more variety you've got in your fabric, the more interesting your star will be because you can tell on this, this works really, really well. So we're going to just remind you of the Bargello, which I have put somewhere very safe. What did I put it with them? They were right here. Oh, there they are. The problem with having so many wonderful things on the shelf, you get confused as to where you've done them. These are proving really popular today. We've got a bundle of the Bargello instructions, four of them. We've got the Angie, the Bee, the Charlie, and the Diva quilt, all different, all really, really beautiful. All four of those today available for 
£29.96, all four of these sets of instructions, saving £9.99 for one of the... You're basically getting one for free. We've also got these available at £9.99 each on their own, so do check the website out for that as well. So now we've got three different um, foundation paper piecing projects. I'm going to start at the very, very beginning. Uh, do we... Is the advanced anywhere? So, okay, we're going to start off with the beginner one. So this is the beginner project here. This is now what I've called the beginner flower, cush uh, flower cover project there. This is the colorway I initially did it in. But this works so beautifully in so, so many different colors. So let me show you... Where have I put them? I can show you these and how they work out so differently in each colorway. So I've used a really bright, bold colorway over here, but equally, I then, when we did the kit, we had these gorgeous pastels. So you can tell it just changes your quilt ever so slightly by using totally different colors, it just changes that feel. So if I take that off, you can see that's really vibrant and quite loud, where that just softens it so beautifully, being able to just tone it down completely. And then this one as well just works so beautifully. So this has got every single thing you could possibly need to make the quilt. You've got all the instructions, all the templates at the back, all being able to do them. It tells you exactly how to put the borders together, what colors you're doing, all the pieces on there. And the first day that I did this quilt um, was, we're just double checking the date now. But you can tell it just changes so much with the color. That's what I love about this. And the fact that we've been able to do the instructions on their own is so great because you can then choose whatever colors you like. I had a lady do these in all of her scraps of other quilts that she made and all the fabric she used were scraps of other quilts. So she put this as a wall hanging in her studio, in her sewing room. And it worked so, so beautifully being able to do that. So on the 25th of March, I did a full demo on how to do this quilt. Um, so you'll be able to look at that. Uh, very easily. So then we've also, so that was the beginner's one that we've called the beginner's one, which is our um, flower garden cushion cover there. Then we've got our intermediate quilt. So the intermediate quilt, we've got two colorways of this one. So this was in the gray. And it is an intermediate quilt because it is very complex and it takes a lot of time. But all of this, again, was taught on the, was it 25th of March? 25th of March. So we did an intense um, demo on how to do that. And it's a really lovely quilt to be able to make. And it is a lot easier than you think it will be because it just means you've got to take your time on it. So then this is the intermediate in the white colorway that we did. So you can see the difference on them is astonishing between the grey and the white. They work so beautifully with both. And then this set of instructions for the intermediates gives you, again, all the details of how best to put it all together, choosing your colours. It gives you all the templates. It shows you what colours to be using for each one. And you've got all the details for each and every single one of these. And again, you've got my demonstration on the 25th of March. And then it shows you how to put all the quilt together, how you're doing each and every one, putting your borders on, putting your next border on, and creating these corners and doing that to finish the quilt. And that each one of these is a template that you would be able to use for each one of these quilts. And it shows you the different sizes, because you'll be doing different sizes of this quilt. Uh, you'll be doing the um, outside edges, the borders, the cornerstones for each of these. This is your block three, which you'll do in two different colorways. And that's all the ones for block three and then block four. So it's a really, really intensely concise pattern to show you exactly what it is there that you're going to be getting. So that's the intermediate instructions. Um, the advanced instructions, not quite. So the, they're the same price and all it is is exactly the same quilt. 
all that you're going to have additional in the advanced um, quilt compared to the intermediate is you've got this wonderful border over here um, and that border there is the additional bit for the advanced section. So I'll just show you the intermediary section on top of that. So that's the advanced. This is the intermediary. So you can tell the intermediary, you've got this lovely teal border just here and then coming into your last border. Whereas the advanced, you don't have that teal border. You've got this wonderful set of flying geese, which does add a considerable amount of sewing onto your project. But you can see just how beautiful that is. And it works so gorgeously. So that one is also available for $9.99. Exactly the same instructions, just then telling you how to piece the flying geese border with it and having the flying geese block in there as well. And if you wanted to get all three of these, we've got the advanced, the intermediary, and the beginner's uh, foundation paper piecing as a bundle for $19.99. So you're going to be saving, I don't know how much that is. You'll be saving almost one instruction there. So you're getting a huge saving getting all three together. Um, so that's available for $19.99 today. Shall I do a little bit of a demo on the flower block to show how to do that? So what I loved about this was being able to show on this how vibrant everything looked in the original colours. But I think sometimes that was a bit large, uh, a bit bright. So what I've done is I used the... So what I'm doing here is all I've done, you'll see I did these demos, uh, it was the 25th of March, I think it was, or it might have been a bit sooner. Um, so now what I've done is I've got up to number 12, so I need to stitch number 13, so I know that 13 is my next colour along. So when I'm doing my number 13, I'm going to pop that colourway on there, because I know that's next. I press along there to check I've got the right line, that's perfect, I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And all I'm doing now is I'm changing my stitch length to be quite low. My stitch length, you're normally wanting to be doing 1.8 or 1.5. I'm using the fabulous Carol Doak, um, uh, the Carol Doak foundation paper. Why's my foot not working? Oh, there we go. So what I've done over here is I've done that first line. Now everything I want to keep is going to go underneath my ruler um, and then I'm going to find my ruler and then everything I want to get rid of is on that side of my quarter inch. So that will then go into my scrap bag. And the great thing about doing one of these is it's so easy to be able to use all your lovely colours and fabrics then you don't need huge pieces of it. So what's so great is being able to then use up your scraps and do a really scrappy quilt but keeping that orange and yellow theme together it works really really well. So we've now done that colourway there which is number 13. Now I'm going to do number 14. So number 14 is going to be a background colour. So I know that's going to be there. I'm going to fold on the line I'm about to sew. And then I'm going to put my background colour in there. Perfect. the joy about foundation paper piecing is because it's such an accurate way of sewing everything that you do is going to be so accurate um, you're not you're going to be able to get your points to match so beautifully so everything you're wanting to keep goes underneath your ruler everything you want to get rid of goes on the this side of your ruler here there we go and then all I'm doing now is setting my seam and then I'm rolling that forward. And then that's my 14th seam in this one done. 
Now my 15th seam is this bottom line over here, which is quite a big section. Um, I've been quite bold and I've chosen this really bright orange here. So I'm going to pop that over there and I'm going to sew that bright orange down all the way along that line. So the foundation paper piecing I think it's a really great technique and it's really accurate and what's good is you can actually then sort all of your little scrap bits that you've got lying around, you can sort them into piles and then you can just add them into your quilt as you go along. And you don't need really big sections of it either. You can use just really small pieces. So once I've sewn that on, everything I'm wanting to keep stays underneath my ruler. I cut off all the excess I don't need. I set my seams and then I rotate that back and you can tell just how vibrant that orange is with using such soft colors there creating that beautiful beautiful colorway there just adds a little bit of life onto your quilt I think that's fabulous then we're gonna have 16 17 so when, I, when I've done this, I know I don't need that much orange on my fabric. I know that the end of my line, the end of my block, is going to be there. So what I do when I've got situations like this, I don't need this bit, so all I'm going to do is trim that off. So that then goes back into my FPP box, so these pieces are kept for later. And that's going to be the edge of my block, ready to go and sew the last few bits here. Um, I'm going to come back to that bit and all I'm going to do is sew number 11 on first because I didn't realize I'd gone out of order. And don't forget today is the very first time we've ever offered instructions only on um, any of, the, pro uh, any of the, the kits that people have designed exclusively for Sewing Street. So it is a once off and I hope you can enjoy and take part in it. People have been asking for the instructions on their own. Um, and it is unfortunately a once-off, so I hope you can enjoy it. And well done if you have been able to. Which one? Starry Starry Night is proving to be the most popular at the moment. I'm not surprised. A lovely, lovely pattern, that. So everything you want to get rid of, you cut that off and leave a quarter of an inch. And what's so great is these pieces you're now going to use in the next bit of your quilt block. So again, set your seam, roll that over, and they're just such vibrant colours these. And then the last two I have to do are these two corner pieces over there, and these are the pieces that I've just cut off. So I'm going to fold that onto my number 16 line there, I'm going to pop that on there, And then we rotate this back. And you definitely get into a nice little rhythm with this. I have a cutting table, sewing machine, ironing board just there and I swivel in my chair getting these all done. And then the very last seam I'm going to be sewing over here, I just press that back. This was a leftover scrap bit that I cut off over here. So you are very little waste with foundation paper piecing. And this is the second, this is the last seam in this block. And everything you want to keep goes under your ruler. And I love that because that mantra, it does stick with you as you go. I don't say I don't cut off the wrong pieces occasionally, but it's a little less when you try and say it each and every time. So now it doesn't quite look like a flower top just yet. 
So what is really going to be the magic of this is once you've actually done that, you've pressed everything nice and flat, you check everything's now, I do give a little bit of steam at this point just to make sure everything's nice and flat. And then the magic happens. You flop that over, you line this up as a quarter inch, so you're going to have a quarter inch left over. You don't want to be cutting on this line here, you want to be leaving it a little bit over so that when you sew them together they all are easily going to work together and you're not going to be cutting off any edges. Again, big pieces like this you've got left over to go back into your scrappage. And the foundation paper piecing is one of those wonderful techniques that you can use to get really, really accurate pointer, uh, points on it, really good precision, and also making things that are quite complex. Um, that would normally not be able to be done quite comfortably with piecing. Foundation paper piecing is really good for that because if I flop that over, there is no way, easily and as comfortably as I've done that, you would be able to cut out the angles of all of that to make that work. Now to finish this flower off, all you're going to do is, these are two I prepared earlier, or on another show, I think I've done the show two or three times. What you do then is you're lining these up to make sure they meet. There are no points to match at all, so you are easily able to just, just not do pins and just let it go. You'll be fine, I promise. And again, making sure you're using the smallest stitch length you can handle. I'm using 1.5 and it's just that way when you come to peel your papers out um, it will be a lot easier. Now I wobbled a little bit in the middle there so I'm just going to go over and if you do ever wobble just go back and get as close to the line as you can. Take your time. There we go. Because if you go back and correct it now there's no issue it all fixes at the end of the day. So now with this I'm now getting my I put things in the most silly places. So what you're doing now is I'm going to set my seams and now this I do press open and it's important to because you've got huge amounts of fabric in one area and you don't want to be ending up with lumpies. But foundation paper piecing will, it's one of those amazing arts and techniques that once you've got it, it's one of the, you just, you can ta tackle anything. It really works well. And then I give that a nice little bit of steam. And then get rid of June Taylor. And that is your finished flower. So at the moment, I don't take the papers out. You will see I have finished this one. My papers are still in for two reasons. First of all, I want to show you how it all works, but also until I actually quilt it, I don't take the papers out because I think it just adds that little bit of extra security because everything is on the bias um, and you do want to make sure you just hang on to it. This one I took out just to show that how good the um, Carol Doak papers were, but you can see how different this is using your own fabric as opposed to things that I've recommended. You can just tell that these really work so beautifully together. But equally, if you do something like that in amongst the brightness, it really works. So the great thing about being able to offer these patterns on their own today is the fact that you can then chop and change whatever colours you'd like. Really, really great. Now, unfortunately, I've got the quilts all over the place, so I can't show you the quilts. I'm going to just re-show you what patterns we've got available for you today. The one I've just been doing is one of the three of the foundation paper piecing bundle. We've got the beginner bundle, we've got the intermediate bundle, and we've got the advanced bundle. There are three of those. Uh, these are just the instructions, so all three of those you're going to get for $19.99 today, if I'm not mistaken. 
$19.99. These are also available individually. So the one I was just doing the demo of is this wonderful cushion cover. So that one's available today for $9.99 on its own. We've also got the intermediate instructions here for $9.99 on their own. That makes that really beautiful quilt there. The advanced one is the same quilt, except instead of the teal border, you've got this wonderful uh, flying geese border over here. You can see that beautiful flying geese border there, which is a lot more complicated. Took me about another 40 hours to do that on top of it. Well worth it because the quilt is absolutely divine. So you've got those individually and as a bundle, so check those out. Now the most popular today has been the instructions by the Starry Starry Night Quilt. This is this quilt I've got behind me here. Absolutely gorgeous these. Really, really simple instructions, nice and easy to follow. Those are for $9.99 today. We've got those as a kit as well. Next we've got our bundles of Bargellos. Oh, this has been our second most popular bundle. It's all four of these Bargello kits. All four of these together, you've got the Ang oh, Angie, the Bee, the Charlie, and the Diva. All four of those together coming in at £29.96. What's really great about being able to get the instructions on their own is you can choose your own colours. What I would suggest is, when you are choosing your colours, make sure that you pick some really dominant colours as you're going through. You'll see over here I've got a really bright purple, a dark purple, a dark brown, that black line, that dark purple and that brown. Because what's really important, and you've got light colours on either side of it, so when you're picking your colours make sure you follow that because otherwise you don't get that movement going through quite as clearly. And you can see on each one of these they flow really beautifully because you've got that really dark line followed by some lighter lines on either side of it. All of these are available separately as well as in this wonderful bundle. So these are also, all four of those are available for $9.99 as well. The, we've also got the Quattro uh, quilt instructions, the Quattro applique quilt instructions here. So this is just the instructions on their own, also available for $9.99 today. And don't forget, you get all your wonderful in templates, etc. here. It tells you exactly how to do all your applique, best way of doing it. It gives you the placement guide as to how you put these all on. You've got all the pictures, all of the quilts have got all the instructions on how to put your borders together, make the whole thing um, nice and simple for you. You've got your written instructions as well as loads of pictures to be able to make sure that that works best for you. Oh, we've had a message in from Sheila. Morning, Sheila. She's saying, hello, John and team. She's just tuned in and surprised to see the patterns for all of John's quilts. She's bought the, which one in the Quattro? She's bought Starry Night and Quattro. Well, good luck with them. She's saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, no, thank you. And please make sure you send all your pictures in onto our uh, Sewing Street fans page because that would be a really, really nice way for us to be able to enjoy what it is that you've made. And then last but not least, we've got our Star, uh, Sun Prince quilt pattern instructions as well. And those are $9.99. I think I've covered everything there. But now don't forget we've got, we're doing early. So what have we got on tomorrow? You've got me again tomorrow. We've got Fat Quarter Fun with Kerry from Living in Loveliness. Oh, I'm very excited. William Morris Gifts, looking forward to that. Cosmetic Bags with Kerry and Quilting Tools and Gadgets tomorrow at 11 with a repeat at 12 o'clock of The Door Stops with Wendy Orlando at 8 a.m. this morning. Every single show that we do, we always start the show with an early bird and today was a doozy. It's a really fabulous early bird today. You've got six rotary cutter blades, 45 mil. These are the So Easy Rotary Cutter Blades. These will fit any one of your 45 mil pro um, rotary cutters. All of them are very universal. You can use them on any of your um, products. These are such great quality, really, really great price here today, £13.98 and you're going to be saving four pounds getting these two together. And what I love about these, if you do get them, 
put all the new ones into one pot and leave the other pot and put old across there. So you've got a nice way of being able to store all your old blades. That's the joy of being able to get two of these. You can fit the, all the new ones in one pot and you can have the other one for your old blades as well. We've got a wonderful tutorial on our YouTube page on how to change your rotary cutter blades. So do check that out and be safe when you are changing them. Those are £13.98 today. Now, don't forget as well, we've got a wonderful Facebook page called uh, Sewing Street TV, as well as the Sewing Street Fans page. And we really love being able to watch and look at all the different makes that you've made. Um, each week we do, Vicky, myself and Debbie, pick our favourite makes of the week and we announce those on a Friday. There's still a chance for you to be able to get that in for this week. So make sure you pop that onto the Fans page. So that's just a lovely way for us to be able to stay in contact with you and to be able to see what you're up to and what you're making. And if you've got any questions or queries about something you've bought and somebody's on there, they might be able to answer it. Otherwise, the community itself are really um, fantastic and really love being able to help you all out on that as well. Now, if you haven't followed us on Instagram, please make sure that you do. It's a wonderful way of being able to stay in touch as well. That is Sewing Street. So if you go onto Instagram and just type in Sewing Street, that's a really lovely way of being able to stay in touch as well. Um, we've also got our YouTube page, which if you go onto YouTube and type in Sewing Street, uh, Sewing Street, that will come up with all the videos going back of every single broadcast going back to the 14th of February. So any demonstrations that you may have missed or want to recap on or anything you've seen on the show or want to recap on, all of those videos are there available and each day's show gets loaded up on the day as well. So you'll easily be able to, like today's show, you'll be able to watch that in a couple of hours on there. So I can't thank you all enough for your time today. It's been a great show. Lots of learning, lots of fabulous deals. Make sure you get that early bird. It's such a great deal. And we'll see you all again tomorrow. Thank you all so much. See you soon. Bye-bye.